It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. And today's show is brought to you by Boost Mobile. Okay, with Boost Mobile, you finally have everything you could want in a wireless carrier. With no annual service contract, Boost Mobile offers a range of data plans and the latest phones from top brands at affordable prices. Step with Boost Mobile and switch today. If you want a super reliable, super fast nationwide network to keep you connected, switch now to Boost Mobile. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Visit BoostMobile.com, our retailer, for full details. Let's start the show. What's up, man? I'm um, blessed, black, and highly favored. How are you, my brother? Same. I'm trying not to move this microphone. I'm the same. Alex told me. Alex told me. I don't know what your African DNA is. You might be black for real. I think we all have African DNA. Of course. 100%. That's a fact. Sometimes I feel it. Sometimes my girl feels it. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who's highly favored now? Yeah, you know I mean? Talking now, in your sleep. Now let's start um <laughs> let's start off with uh it's positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. Yes. Uh who did you see this week that was positively brilliant? Okay, I had a a thought during Flagrant 2 that I'd like to expound on. Talk to me, talk to I me. That I thought was positively brilliant. And um it it started as Latino parenting, mm -hmm. but as I've kind of like extrapolated this thought a bit oh, I, I realized that. I was gonna repost it but I'm pussy it's Go okay <laughs> but, you, but, <laughs> but you got it though I did I did I understood right? what you were saying and all these other people started reaching out be like nah this is all immigrant families this is this this is you know Spanish but whatever like that and I experienced it in my family as well and basically what it was is like Latin parents and I think now I've realized all these immigrant parents tease the fuck out of their kids. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah, do yeah, it yeah. with this, like, in this loving way. There's, like, an affection. Like, there's even, like, words that get changed within the language to add affection. So mm -hmm. instead of calling someone gordo, they call you gordito. Yeah. Which is like, I love you, you fat kid. Yeah, right? yeah, Right? Yeah, like, yeah. and it sounds fucked up even in English, but in Spanish, it's okay. It's, like, with love. So they experience all this bullying from the people that love them the most. So that when they go to school, anybody who bullies them it means nothing. Yeah, I saw that, and I thought that was a brilliant point, but I cannot let the black, uh, the brown community get all of that uh, credit. No, we'll see the other thing. It happens in my family. Yes. Like my Scottish family happens in, I'm sure, but most black, black pe people. Black people, of course, the Keep dozens. We, we, that's what we do. Keep going. We grow up poor and disenfranchised. There's nothing to do but make somebody else your entertainment. And that's why none of us shoot up schools. Huh? Okay, think about it. The people. Hold on, now, what'd you say? You said you're Scotland people. My Scottish people. Scottish oh, okay. people out there shooting right. up schools, bro. Because <laughs> people, you know I'm just uh, people are just looking side. at this. Yeah, side. people just click, looking click. at this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> What's the gordita? <laughs> people might just be tuning in. They're looking at you just optically. They're like, wait a minute, I don't see a tilt on that man. All right. <laughs> no, but I think there's certain whites that don't shoot up the school. Like I bet these like Boston whites that like have that kind of culture where they're getting a lot of ball yeah. busting happen. I don't think they're shooting up the school. I think it's a specific subset of white culture that babies their kids because they like try to protect them and then by protecting them it's like the peanut allergy whites peanut allergy <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, how like, like, like only white people are allergic to peanuts. Like everybody else's family just says, yeah, keep eating it. You'll figure it out. That's fucked up when you you're know? black and allergic to peanuts. I mean, the, God damn, George Washington Carp, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, what if that was his plan the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going like, to pay back these whites. Shh, these are poison to them, okay? <laughs> Delicacy to us. Don't say anything. <laughs> but, I, and I realized, it's like, okay, maybe that's it. This is positively brilliant. You bully your own kids with this cloak of love. So they're prepared for the real fucking world. And when you baby your your kids, they're not prepared for the real world. And then some shoot up a school or some become these like fucking nerds or whatever. But I think bullying from the people you love is very important. That was my positive. I, yeah, I think um, I agree with you because I think that it just makes your skin tougher and it makes you realize that things aren't personal. Yes. Because if it's coming from your family, right, even if it's jokes, even if it's. I guess jokes done with love though, because I mean it can work the opposite way as well sometimes too, right? Because oh. if you're, uh, you know, somebody's mom or father or brother or sister, and you're like really insulting a person on some like yeah. serious shit, they might yeah. take it even, it might it might hurt them even more because it's coming if it's hateful from a family member. If it's hateful, you know but what I mean? If, if you're just, if you're just like, I don't know, if if you're just called something your whole life from yeah. your mother, like, yeah. did you have a nickname from your mom? Nod, because that's my my name is Lenard, so Nod, yeah. That's creative. Yeah. 
<laughs> but they didn't call you nothing? Big head or some shit? Like, my girl calls me monkey because I have big ears. Wow. Yeah. I love the fact that y'all use racial slurs in y'all house to describe yeah. each other. Yeah, it's That's the, aggressive, it's not bro. the only reason you call me monkey, bro. You know what I mean? Got that banana. <laughs> that banana. <laughs> Still black history month in my household. <laughs> hey. No, but I agree with you also, too, because think about how many times you've teased somebody growing up, right? Because yeah. I was that guy that would tease people growing up. And that shit hurt them in a real way. Like, we in the guidance counselor's office because somebody done tried to kill themselves. Like, yeah. that type of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Because they didn't know you loved them, though. They didn't know I was playing. They didn't know how to take the joke. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's if it's just me clowning, I'm not being hateful. I'm just clowning. I'm like, bro, I'm just joking with you. That's it. Light. That's it. So I, I yeah, I can see I can see that. If you're used to getting that in your family, it makes your skin tougher. You don't take things as serious when you're out in the real That's world. That's it. We should bring back bullying amongst the people you're <laughs> Not comfort- bullying. Yeah. Words matter. Not bullying. Family bullying. Parental bullying. Family feuding. Family feuding. I like family feuding. You like Little Steve Harvey-ish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all. Playing the dozens amongst the family. That's, That's it. it. As long A little as ribbing. Fam- I like ribbing. Ribbing. Ribbing, ribbing yeah, is yeah. good. Yeah, ribbing yeah, is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Ribbing. 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 Okay. <laughs> I want to give um, uh, my positively brilliant okay, yeah, uh, is Beatrice Dixon. Um, she is the owner and creator of a company called The Honey Pot. Uh, the first complete feminine care system that cleanses, protects, and balances your vagina. A douche. I, no, I don't think it's a douche. I don't know exactly what it is, but the reason I'm saying uh, she's positively brilliant is because she had a commercial with Target. Okay. And um, in the commercial, she said something to the effect of she's happy to be in this position because she will inspire other black women to be mogul CEOs or oh. whatever it is you know what I'm saying and it was in the commercial that she said that you know right. it's, it's kind of like I guess to be like my commercial you know you see like oh be like Beatrice and people online got upset about that you know it, it's it's those trolls that exist online I don't know if you whatever you want to call them co- cyber coin tail pro just people started leaving mad racist comments on you know different review sites and talking shit about her or whatever whatever but it blew up so I didn't know what the fuck the honey pot was until I saw everybody hating on it, right? Yeah. What I, well, the reason I say she's brilliant is because she didn't get upset. Mm. She actually said, this is just the divine order of things. Clearly, this is what the universe wanted to happen because now a lot more people know my product that, that didn't know my product before. Mm. And her sales shot up 50%. Mm. So I'm just saying that she's Where brilliant. Where is she from? I don't know where Beaches is from. Where Beach, I don't know where she's from. But I'm just I'm just saying that I think that's brilliant because she didn't get outraged with the outragers. She didn't react to them. She used them instead of letting that's them it. use her. Yo, but that's like that's uh, like just going with the flow of things, right? That's why yeah, I always say in yeah, life, yeah. you know, what? she's from from Atlanta. Of course Atlanta. she's from Atlanta. Salute to Atlanta. Shout out uh, to Atlanta, man. That's where them sweet pussies are at. What now. are you talking about? What? It's the honey pot. You're dude. married. What? Listen, I believe <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Damn, man. That's what the honey pot will do to you, bro. Yes. So in life, I believe <laughs> Yes. I don't believe in any I don't believe in good experiences or bad experiences. I believe that everything is just an experience. It's all part of this one process. Yep. Yeah. And I like the way that she just took everything in stride and said, this is what the universe wanted. Because she's correct, right? Because in life, no matter who you are, you got to take the good with the bad. I think we both know that. We know that for what we do, radio personality, comedian. It's like, when we put things out there, it's out there. That's it. So even if people are just hating and they want to talk shit, cool. I'm not about to, you know, go back and forth with y'all. Just everybody that's hearing about whatever it is, the honeypot, go see for yourself. Mm. Because what you did was drive a bunch of people to her site. And then there's probably a bunch of people sitting there like, you know what? I do have that not so fresh feeling. Yeah. Let me order some of this. <laughs> My balance might be a little off. This is what I've been looking can for. Can women tell? <laughs> Taylor, can you tell? Are, first of all, are you done can with your period? Can you tell? <laughs> can you tell? Wait, wait, is that a song? <laughs> well, no, Can You Talk by Tevin exactly. Campbell. Oh. I didn't know whether to hit the can you smell <laughs> or the can <laughs> you tell. <laughs> wait a minute. Can you though? You can tell if it smells bad. Come on. Um, like, can I smell it? Yeah, or, or, or do you know when? It? Is that, that like not girls? so fresh feeling? Yeah, can you feel the not so yeah, fresh feeling? Probably, you can yeah, feel it. It gets irritating. What do you really? mean, probably? Either you can or you can't tell it. You have a vagina. I mean, like a yeast infection or something like that? No, no, just, just when it's like stank. some odor. Oh, um, no, not necessarily. Okay. Cause I don't, I know when my balls are sweaty, but I don't know when they smell. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, we don't yeah. know when it smells. We gotta do that. the test. You don't know when you test it. 
Oh, dude. I don't believe that. The reason I don't believe that is because... Oh, dude, I didn't know women do that, man. That was a little too much for me right now. Every man in this room... (laughs) Wait a minute, what? No. (laughs) You just swab yourself? You do that? Oh, God. That's what she's saying. That's how that coronavirus gets spread. Yo, doing that shit. (laughs) Doing that shit and not washing your hands. Who's that? Come on. Uh, I think I think I, I, oh god I, every woman Cross has to legs. know because every guy in here has taken off a woman's leggings before and then what happened you got hit you with got it you got hit with that woof <laughs> that's why we used to call them woof pants I'm serious because they walk around all day and that smell builds up and you pull them leggings down and then woof that yeah. shit just hits you Wait, it happens to guys well, too though usually they do the bathroom test first though what is the bathroom, like, the bathroom girls test girls usually go to the bathroom yeah be like oh I gotta go to the bathroom quick before they know something's about to go down and then they make sure everything if a girl says she gotta go to the bathroom, she don't got no confidence in how her vagina smells. That's not true. Because think about it, you get home, you get home, you and a girl get it popping, y'all start kissing, she just ready to go. Can I Because she bathroom? know. Oh, because she knows she got a down. fresh one. Oh. But how's it fresh if we went out on a date exactly. and you're sitting on yeah. some like cushion? Yeah, I'm drunk, who cares? It's gonna smell like liquor anyway. And it's yeah. gonna yeah. smell like <laughs> Who cares? Who got time for all of that? As long as, you, as, long as you're not bringing no foreign fragrances in the room. Because think about it, you just come from the club, you've been drinking, you've been smoking, you probably smell like smoke, you smell like a little alcohol that little if, unless it's a real foreign fragrance you ain't tripping off it <laughs> have you eaten bad tasting pussy before of Taylor why you said of course for him for him hold on hold on where's Michaela get her in here <laughs> we learn we, we learning new things about you Taylor no, yes. Taylor I, I you a woman know. first of all no don't first I, of all us I don't okay? I don't go down I just let the girl go down oh you've hooked up with girls I have. Oh! <laughs> That's gay. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't know. Wait, this, it's not like this is Michaela why podcasts are good. Though. You well, learn new Michaela things about your friends. It's not Michaela hookup. Nah, nah, nah. You see, this bullshit girls always do. <laughs> because it was a random time when I went to Aruba. Right. I thought I told y'all. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Son, what? Michaela didn't know about this. Oh, I don't know. Go, 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 go. So you were down there eating some No, fucking... I wasn't. Taylor, I you're wasn't. finally telling a story people might like. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to tell. Yo, yo, yo. Go, Come go, on. Go, 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 go. Uh, okay, right. so, so when I went there. to Aruba. Yeah. Um, so I have a friend that is in the porn star business, blah, blah, blah. We met, she <laughs> met this. She <laughs> met this. <laughs> <story> keeps getting <laughs> She <better>. met this <laughs> couple. She brought them home. We had this like big ass like mansion thing, whatever. And she started hooking up with a girl and they, she brought them back into the bathroom. So me and my friend wanted to see what was going to happen. So we were watching, and they wanted to like pull me. And she's like, oh, come on, come on, like come in, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, no, nah, I just want to watch. She's like, come on, I just want to taste your pussy, blah, blah, blah. So, I, yeah. At least she asked for consent. <laughs> so I just said, fuck it. But I didn't like it, though. I didn't. So wait, didn't so she, you, you laid down. I didn't lay down. I was, <laughs> this is, I did not want to tell this story. No, no, tell this story. <laughs> So how did I was she... on. I was sitting on like the tub, like on top of the tub, uh-huh. and she was on her knees, and she she ate your pussy. Yeah, but it was and it didn't good. feel good. Nah, why? Because it was a girl. I was. I guess she just wasn't doing it. I think she was drunk too. Like in slot, is just she burped like into it. Wow, <laughs> what a fucking idiot! Not you, the young woman who <laughs> eats your ate your pussy. Because we always have this conversation about who eats pussy better, men or women. And what I always say. Hey man, I'm a what champ. I, I know when I'm drunk, I'm a champ on that box. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, so I, I don't want to hear being drunk as an excuse. All right, you got one. You know exactly how to maneuver around that thing when you're drunk, young lady. <laughs> yeah, because wow. licking pussy feels like a drunk thing to do. What? <laughs> really? Doesn't it? Like you just down like. <laughs> like, like I hope you don't eat pussy like that. How you eat pussy? I don't eat. You pussy. just almost got you. Almost got you. You just did what she carried did at the Super Bowl. I don't know what the fuck you Gotta build a wall around your mouth. If that's how you eat pussy. Jesus Christ. What's that cartoon that sounds like? That's all, folks. Yeah, yeah, that's how I eat pussy. What the fuck is this? That's Porky goddamn bro. I'm down there. I didn't know you was a lesbian, yo. That's what's up, man. Real talk, man. You been trying to get some progressive. That's dickly dickly. No, you a lesbian. No, I'm nah, you're a lesbian. Why? Taylor, you're a lesbian, yo. Why am I a lesbian if I don't return hey, a favor? Hey, though? what do you want to do when you you're see that? You're a lesbian, yo. <laughs> Put <laughs> your face in it, pal. No, if you walked in a room and you saw somebody giving me head, a man giving me head, what would you say? That's it. 
Ooh. I couldn't come in here and be like, oh, he was drunk and I was drunk yeah. and I didn't like it. It was one time. I couldn't say that. That's true. You'll be like, yo, you part of the G in the LGBTQ Disney Plus yeah. community, okay? Yeah. All right? Disney so Plus. you're gay. It's fine. Embrace it. It's I okay. have no problem. Like, here, if here you I go. Was here you go. What is this for? It's a remote. You could turn off the TV, but you can't turn off your gay. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's dope, you gay. You might need that card in the future. Taylor, yeah. stop it. Yeah. Go with it. You might Go need it. it in the future. You never know. Hey, you know what? <laughs> this show might need it in the future. We might need so it in the future. We need you we to We got a gay, gay producer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say shit! Black woman gay producer! We checking all boxes. Let's go! <laughs> she, we check the boxes, she licks the boxes. That's how things work over here on the Brilliant Idiots. <laughs> okay. That was brilliant. Uh, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> Yo, a little structure goes a long way. Now, Andrew, you just recently had hemorrhoids. I thought about you when I heard this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had one hemorrhoid. Did you get it removed? What'd you no, do? No, I waited on it. What do you mean? I just waited. What do you mean? Explain. I, I just didn't do anything and eventually it went away. Really? And it takes months, but eventually it goes away. Really? Yeah. Do you know that uh, it's people out there that think if you put frozen potato slices mm. in your ass and leave it inside for 30 seconds, repeat the process for three to five days, the mm. next three to five days, leave the slice inside for 30 seconds more each time. The potatoes have an astringent property that helps to relieve the pain and itchy mm. sensation, which usually happens with hemorrhoids, and the ice cold potato constricts the blood vessels, reduces the swelling, and relieves your pain instantly. So it's people out here on this planet mm. putting whole frozen potato slices in their butt mm. to cure their hemorrhoids. Now, I will say this. I did try the potato technique, but I didn't know you were supposed to slice it. Really? <laughs> what a butthole you got. <laughs> what? You're so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. I thought that, I thought that was the sound his ass makes because his hole's so goddamn big. Wow. I thought he was queefing. Bro, nah, dude. I put some pills up there. I did like some lotion, but yeah. nothing really worked. Honestly, just waiting it out worked. I was going to get surgery. Yeah. I just think that uh, anybody that's out there who has to put frozen potato slices <laughs> in their butt, like you really need to vote your interest. And I think your interest is Medicare for all because you goddamn need a health plan so fucking bad, bro. Because if you, if you have to, if your mind has to go to that, like, oh, shit, I got hemorrhoids. Yo, put a potato slice in your ass. You clearly have no health insurance because <laughs> the average person. You, what did you do when you first got it? You went to a doctor, I right? went to a doctor. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Actually, you know what I did? I had never met my girlfriend's father, but my girlfriend's father's a gynecologist. <laughs> really? And I'd never met him. And I sent him a picture of my asshole with the hemorrhoid hanging out. Wow. Really? And gynecologists have to deal with hemorrhoids a lot because women get them, I think, in pregnancy. I think from like pushing, <laughs> right? Um, they, they're, they're like pushing out babies and there's so much pushing. Yeah. It's kind of like with poops where like a little bit comes out of your butthole too. Wow. Yeah. So I had to call him. He has seen my asshole and that giant fucking polyp. You got to marry her now, bro. Say again? You got to marry her now. Not even a question. Do I even have to ask his permission now? It's like, you nah, see my asshole, you saw my bro. ass, King. That's King. <laughs> <laughs> you saw my ass, King. <laughs> so, for real, you saw my ass. Like, I'm just doing this out of respect, but I really don't have to ask you because, you know. That asking shit is so stupid. Nah, it's not. It's respect. It's so stupid. It's respect. You're real. You're, 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 like, if you, you say no, I'm going to go, okay. Yes. No. I'm marrying your daughter, yo. No, because guess what? I'm telling. Daughter's getting married. I'm telling my daughter. Yeah. You can't marry this guy. And she's saying. Well, By the way, why do fathers give that up so fast, though? What you mean? Like if I maybe because I'm just an asshole. Yeah. And I got three daughters. I can't yeah. wait till somebody asks me if they can marry my daughter. I'm like, nah. <laughs> And then what? That's it. So they're just with you for the whole life? I just want to see how they react. Like, why do you just give that Why you just give that up so fast? Don't just say or yes. Maybe you say, why? Why should you? Why Bro, should I let you marry my daughter? I've, I've been the best man in two weddings yeah. over the past six, three, four months, right? My, mm -hmm. my dude, DJ Frosty, my cousin Kente, right? Mm. Best man. Best man's job to deliver the ring. Oh, boy. You think I deliver the ring soon as they ask me to deliver the ring? Well, you I start lost patting it. and looking around. <laughs> you, know, like, you got to! Asshole, you got to! Asshole. You got to! Asshole. Why wouldn't you? So just ruin that woman's day. That's right! <laughs> She's been waiting her whole life for this day. It's me! Oh, it's about me! <laughs> you don't just give it up. Let me add a little levity to this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I think the past ain't got no jokes. The past ain't got no jokes. You didn't come with bars? I mean, no, the fr Frosty's uh, path definitely did. You got to be... What is it called? An efficient? The efficient? Aficionado? Mm, aficionado? Is that the name of it? What do you call it? The person who calls the wedding. The MC. But, a priest. Uh, 
Well, all right. <laughs> but, but, what, about people, what about people who aren't religious? What do they have? Officiate. An efficient. The yeah, yeah. And if you officiate the wedding, oh. you're an efficient. You should be an efficient for a wedding. Who You'd the be fuck a great efficient at weddings? Son, you, listen, Why people need to eat, a wedding? Asians? I don't know. <laughs> they like it. Yes. You scared of the coronavirus, bro? Um, No. Yes. No. Are we idiots for this? I think we're idiots. I will say this. I don't dap up everybody. I'm doing straight Michelle Obama yeah. Barack fist pumps right yeah, now. You going, <laughs> yeah, you going. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I want to put this under the what a fucking idiot section because I know that y'all probably going to think we're idiots. I'm not tripping off the coronavirus, bro. We're yeah. Yeah. Uh, Taylor thinks that because you're black, you're immune to it. Now, that's that's well, that's well, why it's the what a fucking idiot section. Yeah. Yeah. She went, what? <laughs> Did you make your own sound effect? <laughs> so Taylor truly believes black people are immune to the... Um, That's some shit that started on social media. Like oh, that, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You did not start that. This that was on, seen, I never seen this before. I that, that I seen that meme so much on social media. I'm like, stop. Knock it what off. What else? You, did you start black power fist? Maybe. <laughs> I just don't... I, I'm going to tell you, the, re the main reason I'm not scared of it is because I was walking through the airport. And um, this was this weekend, coming back from L.A., and I saw an old sign. You know how when you're walking down the runway and you're about to get on the plane, so it was an old sign tucked away in the corner. Yep. And it was an old sign, and it was old. Like, you could tell it was old, mm -hmm. and it was about the bird flu. Yep. And I said to my wife, well, what the fuck happened to the bird flu? Yep. Then I started thinking about all of the different viruses we've heard about over the past 10 years. SARS, mm -hmm. bird flu, mm -hmm. swine flu, Ebola. What's the shit that Travis Scott and Kodak Black made the song about? Zika? What was that shit called? Zika. 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 You they know what I'm saying? a song about Zika? Yeah. Oh, it was ZZ. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. Oh, shit. Zika, whatever. But I'm just saying, think about all of those different diseases that we've had over the past decade and right. all of them shit was supposed to be life-threatening. All of them was supposed to kill us and yeah. like, it's like, all right. Are you wiping down the seats on a plane though? But we've been, I do that anyway. So that's the thing I don't do. So I'm lying. I barely, I know. <laughs> Karen did it this week and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. My girl did it. I'm like, maybe. That's the thing. Like, I feel like coronavirus has brought my hygiene to where it was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I got yeah, trash yeah, yeah. hygiene. I don't wash my hands after I pee. Like, you know this about me. Yeah. And like... That's why I only give you pounds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forever. We haven't shook hands in years. No. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I understand it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. But, uh, so I think corona just brought me back to like where everybody is in 2020 now. So I guess I'm grateful for corona in that way. I mean, <clears throat> also the thing with corona is it's like... All of that stuff we're supposed to be doing. You're like, how do you prevent corona? Wash your hands yeah. with soap and water. Yeah. Use hand sanitizer. Yeah. Cough into your arm. I'm like, what is this, kindergarten? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You, how do you prevent corona? Don't be homeless. Exactly. <laughs> That's literally the way to invent it, prevent it, right? Like, it seems pretty matter of fact. Is your wife, like, buying canned goods and shit? Is she freaking out? No, be we're honest. not. She's not getting any shit well, just no, in case? No, she, she is with, with the kids. What she's doing yeah. is, as soon as the kids walk in the house, she makes them take off their clothes at the door. Go wash their hands, uh -huh. and then they can, you know, hug and kiss and all that other kind of stuff. I do the same thing, though. You know what I mean? I don't want to take no chances. I'm laying in the bed last night, and I'm like, <clears throat> and I'm like, uh oh, shit, is that that Corona? Uh -oh. <laughs> or is it just a regular? I, I was on two planes, you know, yeah. this week, and I had to walk through Atlanta Airport, and they said it was like uh, 200 people had symptoms of Corona in Atlanta Airport like a week and a half ago. Mm. So of course it's in your mind, hundred percent. But I'm just sitting there thinking like, we've seen this before. Four. Yeah. And when yeah. you look at Corona, like I, I saw everybody giving Trump shit because um, somebody asked Trump about Yo. the coronavirus and Trump said something to the Sorry. fact like you don't think if you take care of it the way you would like no, no, the no, flu. No, no. What specifically, he, he, he goes, he goes, he goes. Play the clip, Taylor. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's, he's having a conversation with his like the medical uh, advisory board, mm -hmm. right, about what to do with Corona. And he goes, <laughs> this guy's so funny. <laughs> he goes to them, he goes, he goes, okay, so... What if we gave them a very good flu vaccine? Would it work? That's <laughs> and, not a bad and, question. So and the reason I laughed is because the second the coronavirus came out, the first thing I thought was, we'll just get the flu shot. That's, right? Like, Have you read about the coronavirus? Nah. I read an article in USA Today. They said that when you get it, yeah. don't panic. Yeah. They said treat it like it's a common cold. Yeah. 
are the flu. But how do you get it? Sharing chopsticks? You get it the same way you get any other disease. <laughs> it's talking about somebody sneezing. Like that has, that's that's literally every disease, bro. Right, right, right. Sneezing, right, right, coughing. Right, right, right. I'm going to tell you, cover your mouth when you cough. Like yeah. that's the same but now shit. But saying don't wear the masks. Man, that, that mask, I don't, what the, what the fuck Yo, is the mask going to do with the whole rest of your body real, out? Real talk, the masks don't do shit. And no. Asians need to learn about that shit because the masks didn't work. Um, I think it's in Iran too. Isn't it in Iran? And those women are covered you know, head to toe. Yes, so that's it's a like, good point. They dress shit, like beekeepers. They, exactly. Yes. They dress how you would dress if you wanted to not get yes. the coronavirus. Absolutely. But they still got it. They still got it. So that shit is bullshit. Maybe Let's it went go. through their Free. eyes. Say what? Maybe it went through their eyes. From blinking? That stuff, no, that stuff can get in your eyes. Your oh. eyes have, don't your eyes have pores? Yeah, that shit can get in your eyes. So we need to cover these women entirely. I just, <laughs> I just don't think. <laughs> the way can, Allah wants. I don't think you can escape it. Dude, what if Allah was just trying to protect you from coronavirus? That's a good point. He's ahead of his time. That's a good point. Allah predicted a lot of things. And all you brothers out there that are uh, wearing the mask but sagging your pants, that's stupid. <laughs> you know goes, what I'm saying? It goes up that your That shit get right up your fucking ass crack. That's true. All right? That's, that's the shit that's true. killing people. <laughs> that coronavirus that's coming through the ass, when that shit come through your ass and then you sneeze it out, you're dead. <laughs> the coronavirus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just not tripping off coronavirus. I could be a fucking idiot for it, but... We've seen this a million times. Just take care of yourself, man. Wash your hands. Use your hand sanitizer. Yeah. Don't be sneezing in people's fucking face. You know what I mean? Just yeah. don't be nasty. Don't be gross. And I just don't, even when when they say things like, "Oh, yeah, we might have to cancel South by Southwest. Uh, might have to cancel the Olympics. You know, uh, gotta avoid large crowds." I'm like, "What? Where do y'all live that y'all can just avoid large crowds? Yeah, yeah. New York yeah. City, you don't have that luxury. Yeah, yeah. California doesn't have that luxury. We're cancel Times Square. Chicago don't have that. Like, exactly. Like, yeah, you're yeah. around large crowds all the time. This is a large crowd. Yeah. There's more people in this room right now than the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> Count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's Wu-Tang, right? Yeah. Then 10, 11. Yeah. There's more people here than the Wu-Tang Clan. This is a large crowd. Yeah. So how the fuck do we avoid large crowds, Schultz? Fuck, I don't know. You do stand-up every weekend. Dude, we're on a flight. Two flights. Every weekend, man. And then going to do stand-up in front of a large crowd. And speaking to the same microphone. Come on, yeah. man. Come on. You can't avoid it. If you're meant to get it, you're going to get it. Shote, you got any church announcements? I do, man. Uh, yo, we sold out all four shows for the special taping. Um, I've been talking to the production company to see if we could make some more seats available. If that interests you guys, uh, let me know. April 11th and 12th is in LA, man. I want to have as many people there as possible, so... Uh, just hit me up if that's exciting. Uh, we've added new shows to uh, Mad or Tour before then. Make sure you go get them tickets. Uh, we had another show in Portland. Might be sold out now, but go check that out. Uh, we got Reading, PA, uh, Tucson, Arizona. Tucson's going to be the last show I do before we do the special taping, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we had another show in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Make sure you check that out. TheAndrewSchultz.com. We have a bunch more that added. Go get those tickets. And again, get them early because it sells out and everybody's upset about it. I'm telling you right now, get on it, get on it, get on it. Uh, I actually gave this guy Donkey of the Day. Uh, NFL player Jack Brewer. You Why got your clip? Donkey of the Day. Play it. I don't want to interrupt, but I got to say this because it's Black History Month. Man, you the first black person. The uh, Trump? Yes. I gave him Donkey of the Day. And the reason I gave him Donkey of the Day, but not just him, um, liberals got at him for saying that, you know, and we're calling him Uncle Tom and a coon. Right. And I'm like, well, what were y'all in the '90s when y'all saying that about Bill Clinton? Ooh, you understand what I'm saying? And 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 rest in peace to Toni Morrison. Love well, there Toni wasn't Morrison. A black president before. So Clinton. what? I don't think you should be calling any white person a black anything, because guess what? That'll never happen on the other side. Yeah. When have you ever seen a white president go, yo? It's my black homie, man. He want us, though. He down. He really a white boy. You know what I'm saying? We're the only people who do that. You know? Because there's cachet in blackness. You mm. say it as a compliment. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. it's basically saying you're cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. cool is baked into blackness. Yes. Right? It's yes. not baked into whiteness. Yes. Safety is. My problem with, yeah. uh, my problem with both things, right? Yeah. Not even with both. With both. With just the overall statement of calling any white person the first black yeah. president right the first black anything but more so right Jack Brewer was calling <laughs> Donald Trump that because of policy right he feels like Donald Trump has actually done things for the black community for the black community right, right. so it's based off policy legislation first step back opportunity zone whatever it is he feels like Donald Trump done more than the actual black president Barack Obama right 
When they called Bill Clinton the first black president, you can go read it in the New Yorker magazine. Saxophone. Tony Morrison said it because he could play the saxophone, because he came from a single family household, because he grew up poor, Let's and because he liked fucking McDonald's and junk food. It's like... Sounds like a black guy. Hey, that's all the stereotypes of a black person, is what I'm saying. What happened to the stereotype that black people could play saxophone? That never happened. I don't think that... I, it was, no, it was where he played it. Oh, Arsenio Hall. Arsenio. Play the sax on goddamn Johnny Carson or whatever else was back then. It's like, eh. No one would give a fuck. Eh. What you on there with that band and Arsenio, you know, Bro. moving him, doing the little Duval shoulder <laughs> shimmy. You know what I'm saying? Show. Kill him with the shoulders. You're like, <laughs> oh, Al, shit. Al, Al was saying that this is his favorite time of year. Uh, it's uh, during election year when all the white politicians start shucking and jiving for black votes. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God. And that's what Clinton was doing. And then uh, Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, yo, so by funny, the way, dude. by the way, it's actually incredible. It's, a, it's actually Does it fucking feel good? incredible. Does it feel good? No. Like, what does it feel I, I, like? I look at them and I it say... It makes I, me cringe, but I also I don't know what it feels like from your perspective. No, that's how I felt when I saw Tom Steyer. I looked at Tom Steyer and I go, this motherfucker is really, really trying to get us to eat from the Panda Express. And it's like, yo... like, Is that what it, he owns? Huh? Oh, wait. Does he own Panda Express? Panda Express. Oh, my yes. God. <laughs> I was like, is that how became a billionaire? Is that- just know that the Panda Express delivers from now until November in black communities. All right? It delivers ah, for free for in free. black communities yes. from now until November. And I mean, it's just like, yeah, when I see it, I'm like, I don't care about that shit no more. Yeah. When I was young, yeah, it was cool to see Bill Clinton on Arsenio Hall playing the saxophone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, even in 2008, even, even though Barack was a black man, to know that Barack like rap music and, you know, all the bullshit stereotypes that you attach to cool black people to yeah. see that, you're like, oh, that's dope. You know what I give a fuck about? I give a fuck about policies mm. now. Yeah. I give a fuck about your agenda for black people. I don't give a fuck that you paid juvenile to come out and say, back that vote up. Okay? <laughs> That's what I give a fuck about. I don't care that you paid Yolanda Adams to come sing. I don't care that you on stage, yeah. offbeat, doing the guy. Who does the Macarena the Juvenile back that ass up? Right? Yeah. I don't care about none of that shit. I care about policies and legislation. Mm. So to go back to the Jack Brewer, Bill Clinton thing, the, I, I hated the fact that they used to call Bill Clinton the first black president. LeBron even did it a month ago because the reasons they called him that weren't rooted in anything except for negative stereotypes of black, black people. people. And that came from us. Right, Jack Brewer called Trump the first black president and that came because he feels like Trump has done policies and legislations oh. that have actually helped black people and I think both of them are fucking idiotic but I don't think either one of them have the right to be pointing the finger at each other and saying you're an idiot you're an Uncle Tom you're a Salad you're a coon no none of y'all all of y'all need to go under the same umbrella interesting because you're saying that they complimented Clinton rather for cooning yes whereas He's complimenting Trump for actually doing progressive things. Yeah, you're calling him. A, you're calling so him a coon. Why would you call him a coon? Interesting. Because he can. He can look at you and say the same thing. He can. Yeah. Jack Brewer can look at them and say, "Hey, okay, I'm a coon, but you called Bill Clinton the first black president because he played the sax on Arsenio, because he yeah. likes McDonald's and junk food, because yeah. he came from a single family Bro. home, and because he grew up poor. But Dude, I, but I'm the coon. You like know, you know what the reality is? Is man is. Uh, is this shit is a fucking popularity contest, dude. And when it it's comes disgusting. down to it, it's a popular. Last uh, last night I was, or no, a couple nights ago I was at the cellar and um, Chris Rock was there. And whenever Chris is there, I always just try to ask him about these these people in politics or like these famous people because he's been around them. Like he's met all these people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they yeah. all admire him. Yeah, yeah. Right? He's on Mount Rushmore of comedy. So it's just like, what was your interaction with these people? And he said something really interesting about uh, being a politician versus being a famous person. He goes, of course Trump is beating all these people. He goes, do you know how hard it is to be famous for 30 years? Mm. He goes, fame isn't a job. You don't have to be famous. Mm. Like, there has to be a president. Mm. So it's either you or someone else. It's a 50% chance that you get it. Mm. Fame, you could just go. So this guy has literally been famous for 30 years. You don't think he's going to win a popularity contest against some fucking nerdy politicians? He's going to win it every single time. And when he put it that way in terms of what people really relate to, which is popularity, what they related to Clinton about, right? Mm Mm-hmm. What th- that personality, mm-hmm. that cult of character or whatever it is, makes perfect sense. I think that's a good take. I would take it a step further and say that 
politicians have had to pretend their whole life, their whole career, they've literally had to bullshit people. Yes. They've literally had to sell dreams. They've had to tell people what it is they want to hear yeah. in order to acquire their vote. Mm. So when they're forced to be real, it's hard to turn that off. Yes. Right? So Donald Trump, he don't know how to be a politician. Right? But he knows how to be an entertainer. He does know how to be an entertainer. And so that so that you take whether he's bullshitting you or not, mm. you take that entertainer and put him next to a career politician, the entertainer looks like he's authentic. Yes. The entertainer looks like he's real. When you see Bill Clinton on Arsenio and he's playing the sax or he's admitting to smoking a little weed, you yes. know what I'm saying? Or we know he got a little head, you like, wow. He's one of us. Yeah. Like he just comes off as a little bit more authentic. Barack did it great. Even though Barack was a career politician, he did it great. He gave us just enough to let us know, like, damn, man, I think he might be a real dude. Yes. Even if it's just doing something as simple as singing Amazing Grace at a church. Yes. And you know, know what? You, and, and you package authenticity with a message that's hopeful, even if you don't do it. But now that I believe you, yeah, 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 and you yeah. tell me something I want to hear, yeah, that's way more effective. Yeah, that's that's my problem with the Democrats now. They're not even giving us hope. They're not even believable. <laughs> They're not even right? Like us you don't hope. believe nothing. They're the most uninspiring group of people. I, I I don't think Biden knows where he is, bro. I really did. You hear when he uh, congr congratulated his sister as his wife? I heard about that. I didn't see it, but oh I heard about God, it. Oh my God, bro. Bro, he goes, I got my sister right here. And he's holding his wife's hand. Yeah. And then my wife over here. And he goes, oh, they switched on me or something like that. I didn't see that. My biggest problem, man. <laughs> Come is, on, yo. I heard about it. I did, I, my biggest issue is just like, I think they said over 60% of older black voters in the South ran out there to vote for Joe Biden. And when I really asked the question, why? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really asking a real question. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, why? Like, what is it about Joe Biden that is appealing to y'all other than the fact that he had he was friend he got he got war stories with Barack Obama. That's literally that's it. literally what it is. It's literally because he got war stories with Barack Obama, and yeah. and and people like oh don't bring up you you bringing up his record. Yes, I'm bringing up the fact that he uh, created the 86 crack laws with 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 Strom Thurmond, who was a notorious racist from South mm -hmm. Carolina. That he did the 94 crime bill that people are still in jail for now. That he doesn't apologize for mm. to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like I I do bring all that up. Why? Because he has no black agenda now. Right. The one thing you can say about Bloomberg is he had a black agenda. That's it. Yeah. Yes, we know Stopper Frisk was a racist piece of shit legislation. Bloomberg is probably just as racist as any 78 year old white man out there, but yeah. he had a goddamn black agenda. That's all I want from Mr. Yeah. Joe Biden. Yeah. Joe Biden, I need a black agenda from you. I want you to take Bloomberg's Greenwood initiative because he dropped out. I want you to take Peach Douglas' plan because he dropped out. I want you to take the Black Futures Lab initiative, uh, initiative that uh, Alicia, Alicia, mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember Alicia's last name, that she wrote. I want you to take all of I want you to take Elizabeth Warren's plan. I want you to take all those black agendas, come up with your own, and I want you to have a black woman as vice president and I want you to spend the rest of your life which is probably about another eight, nine years mm -hmm. okay correcting the wrongs that you made way back yonder now here's the thing he doesn't have to do any of that shit he don't have to do none of it because he's <clears throat> gonna be the guy yeah. and not only is he gonna be the guy the Democrats have brilliantly manipulated their own people to hate the opposition so much that he doesn't even have to service his own people. You want to do a little... You, you hate Trump so much, I don't even have to do anything to you, mm -hmm. for you, but not be Trump, and you're still going to vote for me. What a G... People, I wonder when, like... Is this bucket talk? Deep dive? Is this deep dive? Can we do a Let's little go. deep dive? I it goes deep, 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 deep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that go. fucking <laughs> wet, wet right there. <laughs> All right, go. So it's like... Democrats have programmed their people. Trump has a program their people, and it's so brilliant to to think that they are the righteous party, to think that they are the party of freedom, to think that they are the party of democracy, right? Mm -hmm. To think that the other party are bad guys. Now, the Republicans have done this as well. This is what both parties do. Mm -hmm. But Democrats just hide it better. The, exactly. Yeah. And what what is genius about it is the Democrats don't even need to service their people because they've created such villains on the opposite side. That you're voting for not them. You're voting out of fear. You're voting out of fear. We can't let that happen. Instead of voting out of what you need. Like you keep That's repeating it. on the show. I'm black. 
I want economic empowerment for black That's people. That's it. Who got it? Who got it? Who got it? I got interest, okay? I'm not in my emotions. People need to start focusing on economics and not focusing on their emotions. Bro. Get out of your feelings and get into your fucking interest. There we go. Okay? All I'm asking of Joe Biden, since we're so forgiving of him, because the candidates we don't like, we... we you, you put them on the fucking cross and crucify them yep. for their past records. Yep. Whether it's Senator Kamala Harris, whether it's Mayor Pete in South Bend, mm -hmm. whether it's Mayor Bloomberg, whoever it is. Joe yep. uh, Bernie Sanders voted for the 94 crime bill. We hold that shit against them. But when you like somebody, it's like, oh, people make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> the 94 <laughs> yeah, yeah, crime bill was just a mistake. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 86 yeah, crack laws was yeah. just a mistake. We're phony. We're uh, fucking hypocrites. We, yeah, 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 we know he lied last week about getting arrested, you know, on the way to go see the free man Delta in South Africa we know but don't worry about all of that <laughs> let's just vote for Joe for fucking what yeah. everybody ran out and voted for Joe on Super Tuesday out of fear and, f and familiarity What's the word? <laughs> you sound like Biden, son. Familiar, <laughs> familiar, <laughs> familiar, familiar, familiar. Son, now I'm going to fuck it up. Familiar. 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 That shit is like feminine. I can't say that one either. How do you say that one? Feminine. Feminine. They voted out of fear because Biden was familiar. Familiarity. Yes. yes. Familiarity. I'm not fucking with that word no more. Yeah. They voted, they voted out of yeah. fear and, and because Biden was familiar. Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's familiar, it. we could say. That's it. They yeah. voted, they out, voted of out of fear. They voted out of fear because Biden was just like them. That's it. Yeah, so yeah. what I'm asking of Joe Biden, because I don't know if he's going to be the nominee. I mean, it's looking like that. He's going to be the nominee. They he's going to be the nominee because they want him to be They're the nominee. genius, bro. Yeah. Can we, Go, 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 finish, because I want to... No, I'm saying, say Bernie's down by like 40 delegates right now. Nine times out of 10, Biden is probably going to be the nominee. But I'm going to tell you something. We can say that they rigged it, but I don't think a lot of people fuck with that Democratic Socialist shit like people oh, think. 100% people don't fuck with Democratic Socialism, and that's on Bernie, and he got to run with that. And Bernie has no black base. That's the other wild shit. I know it looks like that on social media, yeah. but Bernie's base is uh, Latinos and non-educated white people. Yeah, that's his, that's his base. Yeah. They said educated white people and African Americans. That's they, they don't you don't really rock with Bernie in that way. Yeah, it's, you wouldn't think that because of the people who you see publicly endorsing Bernie, the Killer Mikes, the Cena and the Turners, or even like you know Sean King them on social media. But yeah, it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Now it is interesting. I just feel like I feel like the Democratic you know establishment, the elites that kind of run it are just so genius the way they manipulate people into thinking that like their vote matters. Like nobody's vote matters less than like a Democrat's vote because of the system that they construct. Like this super delegate system, for example, right? It's specifically constructed so your vote means nothing if they want it to mean nothing. Yeah. Right? So for example, Bernie can win Iowa and then leave with the exact same amount of dele delegates as uh, I think Pete did, right? Yeah. I think that was what happened, right? So they can basically shift the votes in whatever direction they want. And now I'm looking at this kind of like bird's eye view and I'm like, oh my God, they orchestrated this shit from the beginning. All these people, Kamala, like all these people were put there for a specific reason. They're all funded by the exact same groups to give you the illusion of choice. They want you to think that you have a choice. This yeah. is what's so genius. They give you 10 options. They're like a, a, a magician. You know how a magician like goes, pick a card, any card, but he's choosing the card you pick, even though you don't realize yeah, he's absolutely. choosing. So that's absolutely. what they're doing. So they, they put enough people in the field to make you think you have a choice. They keep certain people afloat. They keep a Pete afloat. They keep a Klobach. Why is Klobach even there still? Nobody's even asking a question. I didn't like that either because her record as a prosecutor is worse than Senator Harris. And y'all gave Senator Harris hell oh, for her record. But, uh, but here's the thing. Senator Harris, they want to be the VP. So they'll take her out early so that she doesn't get torched on stage anymore and have her shit tainted. The thing is all... I mean, it's smart. It's, no, 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 it's it, genius, it, it, right? It's, it's so smart. check it, right? So then you get to the point where you get to the point where actually Pete is surging they're doing pretty good. Then before Super Tuesday, which is last Tuesday's vote, right? You have the two candidates that would have taken the most votes away from Biden drop out. Where do their votes go? Biden. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. and now Elizabeth Warren, this goofy idiot, doesn't also step... She knows she can't win. Right? She knows she can't win. She's she a loser. That's what she does. Bro. She came in she third. Lost her she came in state. third in her she home state. She came in third That's in her own state. She's yeah, a loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. instead of being smart and supporting her agenda, she has her own ego because she needs to satisfy that. She doesn't really care about people. She has her ego. So she stays in the race. Who does that take votes away from? 
Biden. Bernie. Oh, Bernie, Bernie. Yeah, you're right. Right, because that's fault. the person. If she really yeah, cared yeah, about yeah, her yeah, agenda, yeah, yeah, she'd just yeah, yeah. go, okay, Bernie, we're rocking with you. But no. So he gets bodied that way. But the establishment gets all the votes behind Biden. Everything goes to Biden. Now the whole thing is shifted, and they're going to run I'm away not gonna lie, from I it. thought it was kind of cool the way they jumped Bernie this week. Oh, no, it was, it was <laughs> genius. Only because, only because it was we've, genius. we've been giving the Democrats shit. For not being on coal with each other, right? Like Republicans fall in line. Well, no, but that was the, that was the thing about Trump that was so different. Tr- a Trump situation could never happen in the Democratic Party because the Democrats don't allow your vote to count. Shit, that's so, about to happen now. Well, here's the thing, right? So it's like Republicans, because they actually believe in democracy more, regardless of what you want to say. I'm someone who voted Democrat my entire life. Republicans believe in democracy more. I don't think let- either one of them believe in democracy, bro. Say again? I, think, I don't think either one of them believe in democracy. They believe in it more. They don't have super delegates. I think Simple they believe in, as that. I think like they believe in, baseline, that's a good point. The baseline, they that's do not have super delegates. That's a good point. And that's all you need to know. The whole idea of a super delegate is, what, they're voting for that guy? No, no, no. But isn't the that's electoral college kind of like a super delegate? The electoral college, the idea behind it in a way, but it's also like, we need to make sure that there are states that have representation here. Because if the electoral college didn't exist, you would never go to an Ohio. You'd never go. You'd just go to New York. you go to Texas. you go to California. And you'd be like, all right, that's all the people. Shit, Biden, didn't go, Biden won three states last night. He didn't go to. Yeah, he didn't go to the state where his fu- his uh, grandson <laughs> that he doesn't acknowledge is there. Arkansas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Granddad! Granddad! No, for real. He, he, Massachusetts? He didn't go to Massachusetts? But isn't, it, but isn't it interesting about like the whole Trump thing? The Republican establishment did not want Trump. They were, they were like, what the fuck is going on? We'll do anything we can and not have this guy. But because the system isn't built to rob you of your vote, he was able... To usurp it. Yeah, I wish, that doesn't exist on the Democrat side. That's why I think so. Sh- Bernie gets fucked over and over again when we all want Bernie to be the candidate. I don't know if everybody wants Bernie, bro. I thought I people, would vote I, for I'm Bernie. I'm honest with you. I thought people did, but I don't think people want Bernie as much as they say they want Bernie. And I'm gonna tell you something else. Young voters did not show up yesterday, bro. Yeah. Young voters did not show up. So they so so those young voters that are on social media claiming to love Bernie so much. Y'all didn't show up yeah. for Bernie. I don't know if it's because it was the primaries or whatever, but y'all did not show up. Yeah. So you can't claim to love a candidate if you don't go. If you don't go out there and vote for him. I'm fact. sorry. I understand y'all era thinks that you can just tweet your way through shit. All right. <laughs> but until they put the elections on social media and you can go online and just click who you want to pick. Yeah. That's not how this shit works. You got to get your ass up, yeah. go stand in that voting booth and get your motherfucking sticker. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. But. I don't know, man. I just, I'm just, I'm just tired of because black people have a lot of political power, bro. And I think Latinos realize how much political power they have with mm-hmm. their vote. I don't think uh, black people have figured that out yet because so how do we, boy, get black we give away to that? Shit. It out? I don't know, well, you man. You have to detach party. If you are loyal yes. to one party, they will do nothing. I, now for you. that's number one. I've been saying that we need a Tupac, right? Right? You fucking. We need a, a, a block of black people who just say, I'm not rolling with no particular party. I'm simply going to vote whoever puts my interest, my agenda what on the table. What are you doing for me? That's it. That's what Jews do. I don't give a fuck if it's red or blue. Dude, tons of Jews vote Trump because he's like, hey, I support Israel. Yeah. Hey, we're going to give you the Golan Heights or Trump That's Heights or whatever the fuck way you to want. Do it. And That's now the they smart flipped. way to do it. Simple as that. I think everybody should be like that, though. They should. I think party people are so whack. I've, I've been seeing some disgusting stuff from party people. You know why? Because they move the goalposts so much. Mm. They're such hypocrites, right? They 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 do things that contradict them all the time. Like they'll they'll bash a Bloomberg for the stop and frisk, or bash Biden for voting for the ninety four crime bill, but lift up Biden. Of you course. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and he, yeah. he wrote them shit. Like, yeah. he wrote the 94 crime bill. You you wrote the 86 crack law. So it's just like, I don't like the hypocrisy. I don't like uh, Elizabeth Warren saying, hey, Joe, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, you should drop out of the race because of your past inappropriateness with women. Ugh, you fucking Joe Biden's right there. Nerd. Yeah. Like, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't give Joe Biden that same energy. So for me, oh, I just don't like the hypocrisy of it. You know why? Because the establishment said, hey. Because of the establishment, The establishment bro. said, hey, Warren, you're not here to win. You're here to take down Bernie, which they tried to do. You know that it was her that was behind that uh, Joe Rogan attack. Remember when they went after Bernie? Yeah, her people. There's a and there's a specific woman who runs a PR firm, and I'm forgetting her fucking name. But I looked into it and I found out who it was. Who's this big? So it was the Warren people that funded that attack on Rogan right after he supported Bernie. Interesting. So Warren's part of this whole thing too. She knows she's not there to win. You are I, there to distract and you're there to maintain the status quo. And that means take votes away from Bernie so he doesn't get those fucking super delegates so that they can put Biden, who's basically a robot, in position and do whatever they want. I don't trust any of them and I don't have to. All I care about is policies, mm. not personalities. I care about interests, not individuals. 
That's it. Here's a question. What's, up? What's, what's, what's on this paper, baby? What's this agenda look like? If you thought that Trump's agenda for black people was better than Biden's, could you vote for Trump? I'm not ready to do that, Andrew. I'm pussy. I'm not ready to do that. Uh, that's an honest answer, son. That's an honest answer, bro. That's an honest um, no, answer. No, 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 no. Because a lot no, of smoke no. comes with that, bro. Nah, yeah, I don't know. I don't, yo, yo, he would have to have the most amazing, like, yo, Trump, Trump would have to say, Reparations for everybody. What if Trump big said, boy reparations what too? If, what if Trump, a million dollars for every black person in America that's a right lot. Now, now? Right that, now, like now. it'd have to be something big. Like it would have to be something to where I got you, you taking the L because everybody's benefiting in you. a real way, and you give everybody this million dollars, right? Mm. And you got the economy got to stay where the fuck it is. Mm. No inflation. That's right. You so got to if, you, if you if any of you companies start fucking inflating your prices, bye, bye baby. That's the only yeah. fucking way. Shit ain't gonna get expensive once we get money. No way, <laughs> goddammit. Okay, what if what if Trump was like, if I am president, black men can cheat again? Nah. Nah. I'll be looking at Trump like Trump, you a wild boy. You a wild, wild boy. Uh, hey, you wild nigga, boy. I have to call him nigga. Nigga, you hey nigga. You a wild nigga, bro. Like <laughs> Nah. Like, hey, you ain't the first black president, but I see you. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not doing that. Nah, nah, nah. It, 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 listen, all, in, in all seriousness, it would have to be something extremely monumental that shifts the, the, the culture and the community of blackness forever in a real way. The economic empowerment. Bro, that's all I care the about. The progress of black people. So he would have to do something that was that Absolutely. Big. But if he did, do you think that you could galvanize support for him? Or you, would you just do a private? You would ha almost have to. If and, but, and but see, quick, here's the thing with all the politicians. Quick, all right, go, quick. Go, go, go. And you could, you could, if that was the case, you could overlook some of his past transgressions and some of his past attitudes. I wouldn't give a shit. Or current attitudes. I wouldn't give a fuck. So that being said, what a bag at. So that being said, do you understand why? And I'm still. But poor whites voted for him last election. No. <laughs> no, but I, mean, I get it because he sold him a dream. See, yeah, yeah, I get it. So, they, they bought into a dream. You know what I mean? But 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 my, my thing with is what, what happens in a lot of those situations is those politicians dump the bag, and when people get the bag, they forget about other people ah. that are hurting. They'll yes. forget about the kids in the cages at the border. You know what I'm saying? Right. They'll feel they'll forget about the LGBT rights that are being stripped away, right? And you can't do that. I think you can simultaneously do both, right. right? You can you can get you can get this bag from somebody, but then you can also hold people accountable, right? Because I mean, I would think that's what reparations would be anyway. If America ever did give black people reparations, well, we're going to just stop holding races accountable. We're going to just stop holding no, I, uh, I actually uh, think, homophobes accountable. Just, I think that you can vote for someone and, and be very critical of a lot of their policies. You would have to, but that's the problem. That's why we get so mad at these politicians when they take money from the corporations, when they yeah. take money from the billionaires, because yeah. we think they're, they're going to be beholden yeah. to them. I always go back to that Jay-Z lyric, right? Like, I can't help the poor if I'm one of them. I'm with you. So it's like, if you want to make change, and, and he was out there giving a million dollars to each black person, this is a hypothetical, Right. With that million dollars, now you guys are a powerful economic lobby as well. And maybe you take that money, you go, yo, we're not doing cages no more, bro. You want our vote? That's it. You Let know what I'm saying? Out like, of the cages. But you got to put your oxygen mask on first. Like the airplane shit we always say. Yeah, man. So I understand when people vote their interests, especially if they're looking out for dire needs in yeah. the moment. And listen, it's a luxury to vote someone else's interest. That's abundance. That's privilege. Yeah. If you can sit down and go, who else needs help? Yeah. You are in a privileged fucking situation, bro. Yeah. And listen, all we're doing is buying in the dreams. Like people would be like, well, how you know, you know, you said you like Bloomberg's Greenwood Initiative. You like Mad Peach Douglas playing. How you know they're going to do that? How you know Bernie going to fucking erase the student loan debt? Son, there's no way. How do you know happening. he's gonna be better care for all? Like, you think he's really gonna get like get out of here? Bro. You're buying into the best dream that fits you. That's yeah. it. You're buying into your interest. Yeah. Nothing more. Nothing less. We're gonna tax Wall Street. Uh, how? There's no such thing as earnings. I don't you know, know what that means. Like the money stays in the stock. You have to cash out the stock for it to be earnings. Oh. It's like you don't think that you don't think rich people have figured out the system. This, yeah. this is what people don't get. In order to prove income, you have to remove the money from the stock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So once you remove the money from the stock, you can tax it. They ain't taking that money out. What they do is they take loans on the stock while it's there. And loans 
Wait, are loans taxable? Loans are not taxable, It doesn't right? matter. This is the brilliant idiots. If it sounds good, Run let it, it fly. Okay, that's what so, politicians do. Go. Th- well, that's the thing that they're doing. They just found a way to create an economy within their economy. Like Warren Buffett doesn't even make any money. He yeah. just takes a loan off of the the the, the what's a good Berkshire Hathaway stock, right? That's all it is. And a bank goes, well, yeah, he'll pay it back because he's fucking Warren Buffett. Am I crazy or you never hear them talk about who they're going to vote for? Never. I think I might have heard Bill Gates say one time, Bro, he would vote for Trump against. Do you, do you understand Bernie, what they're I think. doing? Do you understand what they're doing? These fucking billionaires, bro. They dress like substitute teachers. I love it for us. I love it because if they walked around like the Migos flexing, Ooh. we would murder them. We would murder. Can every you imagine one of them. Warren Buffett stunt, stunting on your fuck ass? But ima- <laughs> can so you imagine? We'd be dead. We would oh kill. God. We'd just kill him. We'd the just the kill jealousy him and, take all and envy would fucking drive you crazy. crazy. So he has to wear khakis every day and drink his little <laughs> Diet Coke on a fucking stoop. Yes. I drive a Honda Civic. No, you don't. Stop it. They ain't driving no fucking Honda Civic. All those UFOs you see flying? That's it. Every time you see an unidentified flying object, that's, that's Buffett, it's Gates. Gates. Oh, no. I'm about to say Jobs, but that might really be him. <laughs> he, might, he might really be him. Yeah, I might have got the fuck out of here. Like, ah, I'm too rich to be here. Bro, Bill Gates bought that huge fucking yacht. Did you see that yacht? No. He bought this massive fucking yacht. <laughs> what the you fuck? You got to see it. It's, it's millions and millions of dollars. If I Google Bill Gates' yacht, it'll Bill come Bill Gates' up? yacht. You're going to see it, right? Why do you think he bought a yacht, Charlemagne? Why do you think they bought there? Ed and got it for you right there. Now, why do you think he got that God, yacht? Damn, that's your flies, bro. He got that <laughs> yacht because he wanted to dress normal. You know how much his yacht is? Okay. You know how much he paid for that yacht? $40 million? $330 million. Light, bro. and that's light. That's something light, bro. But he got so much shit for it because it's like, wait a minute, why are you acting like you're rich? They got to pretend they're poor to keep that money or else we will fucking murder them. Yeah, the jealousy Simple would eat that. us alive, That's man. It. Imagine being in the club with goddamn Robert Smith and you like, yo, man, I'm going to buy a bottle. Somebody else be like, nah, I'm going to buy the bar. Robert like, I just bought this whole block. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't saying? know who Robert Smith is. Robert Smith is worth $5 billion, richest African-American in the world. Oh, okay. yeah, Well, not the world, in America. In America. Yeah, okay. in America. But anyway, it's just you. They have to do it. They have to keep this all their fucking PR. If you notice, like, like I remember, I once saw Bill Gates in a casino, and I didn't pick up on it. I was in Vegas, and he's playing three dollar Chinese poker. This is before coronavirus. What a jerk! And, uh, what a fucking jerk! And uh, yeah, dude. And I'm like, what a jerk! Oh, he's Bill a man Gates of the is. people. He got me. He got me. Him and his wife. Right. His wife's wearing some stupid sandals and khakis too. They're wearing the same outfit. Right. Billionaires. Right. And I'm like, oh my god. This is the PR team going, hey, go in the casino, don't have any security, just just play some Chinese poker. People would be like, he plays $3 Chinese poker. He's one of us. He's regular. No. They do that little 15-minute shit. Done. If I'm a hater, I'm walking up on you and I'm saying, yo, Bill Gates, you a fuck boy. <laughs> you in here trying to win more money, you piece of fucking shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? You should be out here giving money to us so we can motherfucking gamble. Yo, let me get some chips. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and you playing Chinese poker? You know what I'm saying? You can pay the debt that America owes to China with all the fucking money you got and you out here giving them more money? I hope you get that corona, bro, and walk off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. You right about that, though. You really got to dumb yourself down, oh, humble yeah. the fuck out of yourself if you're one of those people, yo. Yes, because you know how foul <clears throat> shit really is, bro. They know how foul they are. They know what they're doing is unfair. They know how many people they got to squash to do what they're doing. Like, What if Bill Gates and Warren Buffett look at that meme of them that says, uh, whatever amount of money in this picture and not one Gucci belt? Yeah, yeah. And then they just look in their closet full of full Gucci, Gucci belts. Belt. Like, shit. If they knew. If they only knew. <laughs> I've done different. <laughs> Yo, what's up with that party on Mars this weekend? You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. They probably stunting on a whole different level. Mm-hmm. That fucking boat Bill Gates had yep. probably just came up from underwater, bro. 100%. They probably under there. Why not? They can't be above water. Atlanta's probably popping. Atlantis. Yes, the city of Atlanta. Oh, I thought you said Atlanta. No, man. Uh, <laughs> no, no real rich people in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got, I mean, you got some good guys. I'm, I'm talking about compared. Cute rich. You got cute, cute rich. rich. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I would love to be Tyler Perry rich. but I'd they, love to be The Rock rich. Yeah. But the Bill Gates and Warren Buffett? Yeah. Come on, man. Please. Yeah, yeah, Stop yeah. it. It's a Stop different it. level. Let's pay some bills. Let's buoy. I got to pee anyway. All right, I got All this. Guys, turn your dream into a reality. With Squarespace, okay? Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. 
Now, if you guys are not familiar with uh, Squarespace, it is a company that will not only help you buy your domain, they will help you build your website, and now you have a place for your business. You do not have a real business unless you have a website for it. This is more important than a brick and mortar nowadays, in my personal opinion, because would you go to a brick and mortar? Brick and mortar means like a shop that you can go actually in physically. Would you go to a store that didn't have a website? You wouldn't even go. You'd be like, what's going on? This place doesn't have a website. I don't believe this place exists or I don't trust this place. Why would they not invest in a website? So if you have any type of business, I don't care what it is, any type of business, you need a website for it. They have beautiful templates that are created by world-class designers and you have the ability to customize so it'll look completely different than all the other Squarespace, uh, Squarespace websites out there. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple and you get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Okay, so make sure you go to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash IDIOT. The offer code is IDIOT. And by free trial, you literally just go there, play around, see if it's easy for you to put together the website, do whatever you need to do. And if you like it, you want to run with it, then you get that 10% off when you use the code IDIOT. All right? Makari. Do you have a bunch of stuff lying around the house that you just don't use? I definitely do. I got so much stuff lying around the house. My closet collapsed the other day, and my wife is very mad collapsed? at me. Collapsed? It collapsed, bro. Like the, the shelves? The hangers, the shelves, everything just boom. And I jumped up in the middle of the night because I thought they was coming. I thought that was them. <laughs> and people that, I'm, I'm serious. Those folks that I've been worrying about coming to get me, whether it's the goddamn government or the Jack Boys, I was like, they finally fucking here. Let's go, goddamn it. Right? <laughs> oh, I was, I, I was out. I was ready. Top of the stairs. Yo, I, yo! <laughs> Why no. do, first of no. all, why did I do that? I don't know. I'm here. <laughs> in, case, <laughs> in case you were wondering where exactly. I was to shoot exactly. me. <laughs> exactly. My wife was like, yo, the kids are asleep. So I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in the house. Did you grab pistol? Did you grab pistol? I was ready. Yes. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the house, but I'm too pussy to lead a stairs case, right? So I stay at the top of the staircase, because at least I know yeah. they got to come up here. So I got them, right? Yeah. So I'm looking around. I'm like, where's the security camera? She's like, oh. I'm like, oh, what? Fucking closet, whole closet, shelves, everything. Boom, just fell. So I'm saying all that to say, I have a bunch of stuff lying around the house <laughs> that I'm not using, okay? Uh, a bunch of shit. Jeans. I got so much PRPS. I got a bunch of shit. Shirts that say all black everything. I'm giving them the white homeless shelter. But there's an app you can use to sell this stuff. It's called Macari. Macari is this selling app that makes it fast and easy to sell almost anything. It couldn't be simpler. Take a few pics of your stuff, add a description, and boom, your item is listed. Then once it's sold... Macari emails you a shipping label and you just stick it on and send it off. No meetups, no hassles. With millions of people using the Macari app in all 50 states, stuff really sells. Okay, the app has over 500,000 reviews on the app store with an average 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? So don't let that stuff you don't use go to waste. Sell it, ship it, and get paid with Macari. You can find Macari on the app stores or on Macari.com. M-E-R-C-A-R-I. Macari, the selling app. Let's get back to the show. I want to bring my man Humble the Poet. Humble the Poet pulled up. Taylor, let him sit there. I right wanna, here, right in the middle. I want to talk to Humble and Schultz about something that I know is near and dear to their heart since we're going to get into shit you won't care about next week. And I want to talk to y'all about basketball. Okay. Do you want to um, maybe lift up the chair a little bit? Is that possible? Does the, it go? The reason not, I want to talk to y'all about basketball is because I know that oh, this is so funny. What? <laughs> what, what? Somebody just posted because you know they're going in on Sean King. Yeah, Luke Why, to Sean what King. Saying? They mad at last night. Sean King called Rachel Maddow out on something that Rachel Maddow did not say, and Rachel Maddow retweeted him and said, "What the fuck are you talking about?" She didn't say what the fuck you talking about, but she was yeah. like, "I did not say that." He she actually said something about Bloomberg, but for whatever reason, Sean heard Biden and he double tripled down on it. So now they're killing him. And somebody just said nicknames for Sean King, Talcum X. Martin Luther Cream. <laughs> Pale Revere. <laughs> Tupac Shagor. <laughs> Alexander Scamilton. Shaka Khan. <laughs> As in Khan, C O N, yeah. like Khan artists. Yeah. Snow J. Simpson. <laughs> Snow J. Simpson is good. W E B Defraud. God damn it. I don't know who you are, Timothy Alvarez, but you just made me laugh. We need to sit down Yo. with Sean King. Has anybody just looked at him and, and said, why is everybody in your family white but you? I've never <laughs> met Sean King. Has anybody asked that specific question? I've never met Sean King. The Have you seen his brother? No. 
Look at a picture of his brother. It looks like he works at GameStop. Only reason I don't give I don't give I don't give Sean King hell because Sean King does fight the good fight. That's it. Like I mean, I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't know what people want from Sean King. You know what I'm saying? Just honesty. That's it. He don't have to like he just gets caught up sometimes. But that's think about it, right? When you're yeah. a shooter, yeah. When you're a shooter, yeah. Sometimes you're gonna hit the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if, if if that's what you do every day, if you devoted your life to going at shit, go, you know, fighting for different causes, calling people out, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Every now and then you're gonna get it wrong. And guess what? When you get it wrong, you gotta take them L's, man. But what does he do? Like, do black people need to be convinced that the world's racist? Like, who are you fucking working for? Black people know the world's racist. White people think you're an idiot because you're lying about not being white. So literally all you're doing is selling trauma back to the black people you say you're supporting. And it's the biggest horse shit, if you ask me. I, it's think, like, I think he brings attention to a lot of things that necessarily don't get attention. What? What? <laughs> Every time attention is brought, it's wrong. Just what? Well, let me read the tweet that he said. I mean, said. he's the reason we got Snow J. Simpsons now. That is true. That's name. That's, I love it. I mean, okay, fair enough. He gave us he gave us a good name. He gave us a good moniker. I just I just no don't Simpson. understand who he's helping. Like, does he feel like black people wouldn't know that that they experience racism every day if it wasn't for him tweeting about it? Well, okay. Like black people get I get it. I mean, I think that too. I think sometimes you just, you know, rehashing It is trauma. the most white thing to do. <laughs> but I think he does. Explain I, to black people. I do, <laughs> He's white explaining to black people, hey, guys, well, no, I it's think rough he, for you. I think he has a very diverse <laughs> audience. And so he does bring attention to shit that a lot of other people, especially white people, wouldn't know. And I've seen Sean King raise a lot of fucking money. For different causes, just because of social he's, media. He's very good with the money. Like everybody checked his books. He's That's, not. I mean, some people. There was a thing one time where they said he was stealing money, but he opened up his books and let everybody, and everybody see. Shows. So is that, yeah. I mean, I'm not calling him uh, a thief or anything like that. I just don't understand his purpose in the ecosystem. I would love to sit down with him and have him explain how he's helping black people. That, that, listen, I would love that. I'd I just love, don't I'd, understand. I'd, I'd love to have that convo with Sean. He tweeted yeah. out breaking MSNBC and Rachel Maddow just reported that multiple senior officials within the Democratic Party are interfering with the primaries to stop Bernie Sanders. Rachel Maddow said, what? No, I didn't report any such thing. So then they put out the clip of Rachel and she was actually talking about <laughs> Bloomberg. And Sean just tweeted out some absolutely hilarious disses about me in the trending topics. I've trended dozens of times across the years and have learned, and have learned to just roll with it at this point. You grow thick skin and get impervious to it eventually. Nah. W.E.B. defraud hurt a little bit. <laughs> I know that hurt a little bit. <laughs> W.E.B. defraud hurt a little that bit. Hurt. Right? Yeah. Oh, come on now. That hurt a little he bit. He wasn't bullied enough by his family. That's it, bro. He had that white family. If he had black family, he'd be good. Right? Like, he had the white school shooter family. That's who he grew up with. All right. Enough politics. I want to talk to y'all. Uh, things that you care, won't care about next week. Humble the poet is here. I'm just thinking I'm going to care about next week. <laughs> come on, son. You oh, had one God. job. <laughs> All right, we getting there, guys. All right, we slowly but surely we getting this thing together, man. I think one I don't care would have been good. It's one, it's, it's one. one. Didn't need the drum roll. Didn't need, yeah. Didn't need the drum roll. Just, it's just like as soon as I say shit I don't care about next week, I don't care. Boom, boom. That'd that right. be hot. Right, so I'm producing right. on the spot. This is yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, come with a poet. It's from Toronto. Yes. Big basketball coach in Toronto. Can't deny it. We run it. Right. It is two people that are synonymous with their sports teams that one, I think, created the lane for the other one, and that is the great Spike Lee for the New York Knicks. Mm. I think that he has been the most uh, popular figure in Madison Square Garden for the past 20 years, mm. including players and everybody. Mm. That's just my personal opinion. You're, you're a Knicks fan. You could, you probably could. I think you're right, man. He's the mascot. 100%. He's the mascot. He the fucking Unofficial mascot. ambassador. <gasps> Y'all have Drake. Yep. Right? So when you see what happened to Spike Lee yep. this week, Spike Lee wants to come through the employee entrance right. at the garden. Right. And they wouldn't let him. Got into a little shot and match, whatever, whatever. Wanted him to come through the regular VIP. What did you think about that, Schultz? Um, well, James Dolan, the the owner of the Knicks, is a complete fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I boycotted the Knicks this year. I've, I I was a season ticket holder. Okay. And I gave up my season tickets. I don't watch a game on TV. Wow. I won't do anything. Wow. Until he doesn't have to sell the team, but he has to remove himself as this 
controlling figure on a team. Ooh, so yeah. I said he should sell the team, but what you said makes sense. Yeah, he's like, I, I, you don't need. Why would you sell it? I mean, it's the best thing to yeah. have in the world. You have the number Hire one franchise, a basketball president of basketball operations. Let him actually, but run let him shit. actually do it because yeah, the yeah, way yeah, Dolan yeah. runs his businesses are is if you are loyal to Dolan, nothing bad can happen to you. You just get repurposed. Like yeah. even Mills, right? Who I think was the president, Steve Mills. He got fired and then put on the board. Wow. He actually got a better yeah, job yeah, yeah, after yeah, being yeah, fired yeah, yeah. because the thing with Dolan is he's loyal as fuck. And if you show loyalty to him, that's what happened to Isaiah Thomas. So Isaiah Thomas got in that whole like Me Too situation with the girl, right? Word on the street is Isaiah Thomas took that L for Dolan. Really? Word on the street oh, is the Dolan story. was the one acting wild. I like gossip. Let's go. It's a little gossip. Like tea, baby. But was the one acting wild <laughs> with the person that worked for him, yeah. right? And Isaiah kind of took that L for him. And that's why Isaiah didn't get fired. He got moved to some other position. He was like, oh, he'll be the head of the Liberty. He got a Me Too case and then they put him on the head of the WNBA team. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> like, so you're just, saying like, you know how Mel Gibson doesn't put his name on top of his movies no more? Exactly. Put them out? But they put him out and someone's the backing him. Exactly. Mel so, Gibson still makes movies? Oh, yeah. yeah. He doesn't put his name on them? Yeah. That's smart. I didn't know that. So, so, the, thing with, so the thing with Spike Lee is this. Um, first of all, it's corny, it's foul, it's just dumb. Uh, the fact that Spike Lee's been paying top dollar for his tickets all these years is hysterical. That's and what like, I'm can you that really shit call, hurts can, my fucking heart. Can you really call James Dolan loyal when you got a guy, Spike Lee, that said he spent like $10 million over how many years on bro, Knicks tickets? You're not even giving Spike a discount, That's what bro. I'm saying. Spike should get free look, tickets. We got Nav Batia super fan. They gave him a ring. So the really the, yeah, yeah. The he's never dude. missed a, he's never missed a home games because the, the Raptors is twenty five years old so since day one he's been to every single home game I see that's loyalty Court, bro yeah. courtside tickets you've seen him you've seen him he's that's the Punjabi loyalty. dude Punjabi that's like guy. under the basket come on you would he has a turban on you know so he's there humbles there I'm supposed to know all of them apart they all got like it's Humble, Toronto you get no seats bro, bro. <laughs> Humble, <laughs> Toronto when you switch his name to cocky the poet it's mad turbans in the crowd at Toronto games yeah. specific yeah, there are a lot of terms, in the but uh, that's why our city's so dope. But here's the thing about these policies: because I asked around some of my friends, and I was like, "What do you think about this whole Spike Lee thing?" He mm. goes, "These policies are never directed at the individual, right? Mm. These policies are directed just at the stadium themselves." And everybody gets an email. Spike got an email. They said, "Hey, we're no longer doing employee entrance." Now, if you are classy and intelligent and a smart organization, you do a personal call to Spike. And you go, hey, since you are the most loyal Nick fan ever, and we haven't done anything to earn your loyalty, we just want to let you know, we're not doing employee entrance anymore. If you need us to bring you through another entrance, we can work that out. But that, I guess, never happened. How they about, definitely got an email. How about if Spike comes to the employee entrance, you still let Spike in through the fucking employee entrance? 100%. Like, yeah, 100%. Stable, Spike said he's been coming through that entrance for 20 plus years. Like, yeah. who cares? It's Spike Lee. You're 100% right. I guess what I'm saying, the policy is never directed at individuals. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, a yeah, company-wide yeah, yeah. policy, and then an email goes out. And I've asked other friends who, like, work for organizations, and they do these types of things. But uh, if it's Spike Lee, one, you just let him in. And then two... You make sure you give him a personal phone call so that he's not embarrassed. This is somebody who's ru like ridden so hard for the Knicks, especially during the worst times. It's like the least that you could do is call. But that just shows you how detached Dolan is. Because I guarantee those 19-year-old girls that he sits in the front row, you know, the Dolan seats for his shorties, mm -hmm. them little 19, 20-year-old model girls. Oh, I didn't know that, that was for. Oh, yeah. They sit with really? them little 19, 20-year-old model girls right there. I, I I bet they don't walk through the regular entrance. Hell I bet they go no. through the employee entrance, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they employees of yours, James? Do we need to know something? Well, they come through the side door. <laughs> well, side chicks. Maybe the back door. Maybe the back door. Maybe that's later. Yeah, I would hey, listen. If I let you come through the back door, I'm, at, I'm letting you come into any entrance I want to. Because I don't need nobody to. You, I don't need you telling nobody about what we do. When, when, uh, it's just you, us together. You come through my back door. I come in your back door. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So would that ever happen to Drake? No, no, that would not happen to Drake. One hundred percent. That's my point, though. John, they give Drake the keys in Toronto, bro. But that's my point. That's they why New York the, ain't the shit. Yeah. That's why the that's Knicks ain't saying. shit. They gave him a ring. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't Drake know, got I don't one too. It. Drake got one too. Yeah, but I think he's an official employee, though. He's an ambassador. But like, yeah. here's the thing about rings: not all employees get rings. Oh, really? The rings that players get are different than the ring that a coach. No, maybe not the coach, but the ring that like. Uh, a GM or president might get, and their way, the guy who's like the custodian, he might not got a ring. 
It's not for everybody. I thought if you were an employee of the team, you nope. get a ring. Like the accountants get a ring. Nope. No. Nope. Oh wow. Really? Mm. Mm. Just no. the players and you accounting. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you, you weren't with, were with me shooting in the gym. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you might get a version of the ring, but it's not the ring. Well, you were paying to keep the lights on in the gym, so yeah, I can see the shot. That, but then players, though, dude, <laughs> them players, I'm getting the fans. In New, it. New York's held hostage. Y'all, your we team are. is held hostage, and we fucked up. The only way you do it is you boycott it because that's the only that's thing. The he'll only listen way. To. If nobody shows up to the games, he'll be forced to make a change. I'm not even saying sell the team because I would never sell the team. But you have to change something if it doesn't work you change it if you keep trying the same thing over and over again you're crazy right that's the definition absolutely and sandy is doing the same thing over and over expecting different results boom but by the way that's like you said it's the fans fault because y'all keep showing the fuck up not me well you show up for mediocre product that's why when spike lee said i'm not going to the games for the rest of the season i think every knicks fan should follow suit mm -hmm. and then do what andrew did and then don't go next year either spike and, shouldn't go until it changes and if i was a player yeah i would never come play for the knicks i saw y'all arrest charles oakley Mm. I saw y'all motherfucking fuck Spike Lee up and won't let him in. Mm. Why would I ever come play with y'all? What respect do y'all show show y'all players? Real talk. Y'all super fans. Yo, if I'm Spike, I keep buying the tickets. Yo, I do a GoFundMe. Keep buying the tickets and make sure them shits are empty every single game. You have two still supporting them, though. Yeah, but whatever. But whatever. We could GoFundMe it. But the fact that those two seats would be empty on every single game, every single game MSG, you see empty seats. That was where the boycott could start. And then maybe some other people are like, you know, I had enough of this. I'm going to have my seats empty too. Imagine the Knicks played yeah. every single home game with the entire front row yeah. all empty because the biggest supporters, the ones who put the real money down, are like, I'm not even going to watch this. You know how embarrassing that would be to James Dolan? Yeah, man. That's how we do it. The big guys got to put that fucking money up. James, James Dolan, if you're listening... Do the right thing, okay? <laughs> Do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do the right thing. Right? What do y'all think about... Uh, do you even know who Life Jennings is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He's you the guy that Jennings did that is? song, right? He spent a lot of time in jail, then came out, then went back. Yeah, we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. frog exactly. hopping. He was upset. Must be nice. Do you have the clip? He's upset again? You have, well, you, you, no, you have the clip of uh, Eva, the clip that he was mad at? Let's play that because it, it, it's not even about life. It's about a broader topic because, you know, Humble's clearly about to get married. Andrew's about to get married. I am married. You know what I'm saying? Wait, did you propose? <laughs> what? Are you engaged? I did not propose, but I am. I'm for, I have a forever fiance. Wait, what does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> yeah, what, you propose? Are you scared that of means, commitment? Huh? Oh, are you scared of commitment? No, that means I, I can't be talking on podcasts when I haven't talked to my parents yet. That's Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You proposed to him? Wait, hold on, hold on. Come Bro, on, hold Miss Humble. Hold Miss, <laughs> Miss Humble, we got another microphone for you. I got it down. Sandy, Come on, Sandy, Miss Humble. Sandy. You, yeah. wait a minute. You we haven't told his parents. And well, they're gonna find. They're not gonna listen to this so podcast. So you proposed to Humble the poet? <laughs> I did. Ooh, how'd you propose? Tell. How'd you propose? Um, on a boat in Trinidad. So, oh, wait, just recently. Big baller. Don't leave me hanging. Yo. Oh. Corona. Oh. Corona. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Hold up. This is so lit. So you're on a boat, right? You get down on one knee? Yes. And you had a ring? No. no, no ring. How'd you do it? Um, I just told him I want to marry you. And oh, then he was count. like, why are you asking me? <laughs> he was so confused. That was cute. I was like, why, no are you, why, are you, why are you telling me this right now? She's like, no, look, everyone's watching. And I'd be looking, our whole squad's like, I was like, oh, shit, this is happening like that. Humble, when she dropped to her knees, it had to be a little pervert part of you that was like, mm. <laughs> right here in front of everybody. Like, this is, like, in the water? <laughs> it's funny, because neither of us can swim, so we got those noodles in between our legs. Yeah. So we're walking around, I was like, oh, look, our dicks are touching. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. This is the guy you want to marry. All right. so, so you proposed to him. Now, were you a little bit insecure about proposing because it's like there's a gender uh, bias when it comes to that? Not at all. I think a lot of it was me wanting to do it exactly because of that. Because I I grew up in a family where females were always pushed to do whatever they wanted. Okay. And it was never like male, female. So I was like, I'm ready to get married. I know he's not going to say no. So I'm going to do it. There's no... Uh What's to call it? Patriarchy? Yeah, yeah. Patriarchy. Yeah, no patriarchy. Although there is a lot There's of patriarchy, patriarchy in just the community, like, yeah. just not in my family. Right. Your family's pushing back. How yeah. did you feel, Humble, when like he was like, I don't want I wanna I wanna ask you, how'd you feel? 
Uh, that's how I felt because my whole thing literally, it, it, for me, for me, it was much more of an administrative delay. I'm, I'm waiting on my visa. So all it was is like, yo, when I get my visa, I'm going to take her to City Hall. Then she gets a visa instantly. And then we'll worry about the family stuff later. And then literally, like, I'm still two, three weeks waiting. Hold on, y'all marrying for green cards? Huh? What's going on here? What am I missing? Hold <laughs> on, hold on. What the fuck am I missing? No, no, I'm so I'm 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 going so I'm I'm Canadian. Okay, but now I'm getting a lot of work in the states. Got you. So I'm getting a a talent visa, and then all it is, and she's she's been out here doing her thing, but all it is is if we're married, then she can benefit from that visa got you so i was just it's like wait- a buddy pass like a buddy pass exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 yeah. so i was just waiting on that it's just every time i thought i was gonna get it they asked me more questions fill out more forms and everything so i was waiting on that and then when she said this i was just like oh two, three weeks i would have it would have went the other so way no, do you do you still get a ring um i have a ring wait you okay. bought yourself one yeah. <laughs> no i bought no. a ring. Uh, so after <laughs> no. the proposal you bought her a ring no, no i bought that ring a while back do you need a ring? This Do you so need a ring to make it official? We're just doing everything backwards. Yeah, this is so confusing. So you got her a ring, but you didn't propose. Then she proposed to you, and now the ring is an engagement. Now I probably got to get another ring. Yeah, I think you got to get another one, dog. I have no issues with that. I'm, I, hey, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. Though, I think that's fly, and the reason I think it's fly is because I think it's a lot of women out there waiting to get married. And maybe just maybe the guy just has cold feet or doesn't know exactly how to do it. Maybe he's a little afraid that you may say no. You might need to take that first step. I don't see the problem with that. What is, and we yeah. was having all like all the conversations were happening. That's you know, that's the thing too because in brown cultures most people are getting arranged marriages so nobody has those opportunities. But we were already having all the conversations. Like, yeah. All the, the unsexy adult conversations about where to live, how to do things, for right. us, all of that. So that was all there. So yeah. in my head, so even when she said it, she was like, I want to marry you. I was like, why are you saying this to me? Like, we haven't been talking about this. And then when she pointed to everybody, I yeah. realized it was a moment. Because uh, she was supposed to take me to, she was supposed to walk to the beach. And why didn't you walk to the beach? Tell them. Because there was too much seaweed and it was gross. That, that was the plan, to walk to the shore and yeah. then get down on my knee. Yeah. But then there was too much seaweed and I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to have to do it right here. Yo, I don't know, man. If my girl gets down on one knee, dog, I'm going to be, hey, get up. <laughs> yo, chill with all this shit. Come on, yo. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think I got some patriarchy in me or some shit. I I admire it. I think it's cool. I didn't. I didn't know it was like, coming. Nah. I, no, I got patriarchy in me too. I just didn't know it was coming. Yeah. I honestly just I was completely confused until I saw the crowd of people and like one dude was already crying. He's just like, just like <laughs> we only have patriarchy because that's how society. That's what they put put in our head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just like when you're on a plane so, uh, and like, you know, you see a woman with a heavy bag and you're like, yo, so, let me get that for you. And she's like, no, I got it. Like, let me get that for you. And you're like, no, I got it. And then when you go to get it, you're like, yeah, this shit heavy. You probably should get it yourself. <laughs> or at least help me. You Can know what I'm saying? Help me something? pick it up. So, Bro, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what happened? We, we're flying back from Miami or something like that. I had my phone in one hand, right? Mm-hmm. And I had my luggage I had to put in the overhead bin, right? And it was a roll-on, so that shit was kind of heavy. And I I lifted with one hand. I tried to one-hand it. One hand in a roll-on is is tough, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. I one-handed and my shit dropped back real quick. And then I picked it up. And this woman next to me, she's like, I'll help you with that. And then, like, she put my luggage in the overhead bin. And I just looked back at Al and Mark, and they were just like, yo, man, come on, bro. Like, I'm embarrassed, dog. Like, dude, I had ladies tell, take care of my luggage, You don't think that shit should, should, should t- tone down your sexism a little bit? What? <laughs> that little one moment should tone down your sexism. No, I just raised like, it. No, I she toned like it down. To, dude, I was in an emergency exit. I was looking at her like, yo, I got this if anything goes down. But no, no, everybody's safe. No, I got, everybody's no, got a real safe. reason. I need a, I need a, a real reason. Yes, I was like, yes, yes, we're safe today. Hey, that's funny as hell. You got to be extra sexist if something happens. Yo, Sweetheart. Got it. Baby. Yeah. I got this. All right. See, so you know what I'm saying? You, you, you want have, some snacks? I'll pay for I you. Got you. You want a snack box? Pick your snack box, babe. But no, I got. I talked about that because Life Jennings said that a, uh, changing your daughter's last name from her father's to somebody else's is whack. From her father's to someone else's. Somebody else's is whack. Give me an example. What does that mean? Play it. Can you break that down? Sterling, yes, like everybody else. We legally changed her name this past year. It was, we went through a lot to do it, but. The, How much more before the actual uh, process is done? Adopt, well, the name change is illegal. So now we have to go through the adoption process. And I mean, he's making it a little bit easier for us, mm-hmm. acting crazy in the public. 
So I'm, I'm confused. So Life Jennings has a kid. No. no, Life don't have nothing to do with this. What? Life just commented on um Life commented on the situation, but Eva has a kid with somebody, and uh, Kevin McCall, and Eva wants to change the last name of the child from the father's last name. To Deverne. To her husband. Oh, to last a new name. husband last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Nah, 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 nah. Oh. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. Okay, talk to me. No. <laughs> it's my nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you're not in the kid's life? My nut is the kid. Okay. I am the kid's life. Got you, got you, got you. <laughs> it's my last name. Yes. What about Lori Harvey? No. What about Lori Harvey? He did. Lori Harvey's adopted. But still, no. He is, though. No, nah, that's my kid. But then again, you know what? I will say this. I'm saying that as someone who would always be in my kid's life. But if you're not in your kid's life. That's what I'm saying. If you adopt a kid, would you want to change their last name? Nah, that's all on the kid. If I adopt a kid, I'm definitely changing the last name. You think I paid for this child to not have my last wait, name, man, humble? Wait. Adopted, like, from China or something like that? I don't like care. Or, adopted, or like, let's say you fall in love with somebody who has a child. Who already has a child. Uh, How old is the child? Twelve. Yo, it all, all no no the all all depends on the relationship with the pops because if my girl has a kid and the pops is still in the picture, I want the best relationship with the pops possible because that's going to be the best outcome for the kid. I don't want the yeah. kid playing favorites between the different father figures and like like I want to be homies. I don't know if that's possible, but I would love to be homies with the dad because it's like yo I can't make the baseball game. I got you, yo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're there for the kid. I, the last thing I want to do is create some animosity where the kid's using my last name. Now the dad looking at me like, not only did I take his girl, yeah, took his yeah, kid. Yeah, 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 See, my yeah, my yeah, sister's yeah. divorced and so my nephew ha still has his father's last name. Right. And my nephew's like becoming a really good football player and I want to like wear his jersey, but it's my sister's oh. ex's last name. So I can't even rep. Wow. I never thought about that scenario. But he gets his name on the jersey? My nephew's playing high level football now, so he's got like jerseys with his name on. Canada, his dad's bro. last name. Canada, bro. Why? But but is his dad in 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 the world? Yeah, they're fifty fifty. And are they cool? Or is not I think cool? They're, they're cool enough. I mean, like my family isn't trying to see him his side at all ever. Right? Is he in his child's life though? <clears throat> yeah. Well, well, he, he can't just change his last name. Nah, you can't. But no, no one's trying to change it. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. want to rock a jersey. I'm just like, ooh, What's I can't walk around with that. If you tell me like sing or one of these really no, no, not a generic one. No, it's like a specific one. Okay. Uh, My thing is this: I, sing, the purpose of sing was to get because when in, in, in Punjabi culture, you, you can tell a person's cast by their last name. Right, you they're cast. They're cast. Like, are they a farmer? Are they in business or what gotcha, have you? Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. And based off that, there's a lot of discrimination. So sing came into the picture to kind of whitewash it all, and that way you can't tell who's what. Right, because all not all, but like a lot of the Punjabis have that name. Singh. They don't have it legally. Oh, they use it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Cause sing, what sing is the uh, that means prosperity or something? Sing means lion, 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 like lion, the animal, lion. Oh, I thought you mean like Joe Biden lion. You mean like <laughs> lion, like roar? Yeah. Roar. Okay, got and you. And for you. women, it's core, K A U R, and that means royalty. Okay. And then these these are names that get put in, and often everybody has it as a legal middle name. But ah. then, like even like back again in my former life, I was a school teacher. I was Mister Sing. I didn't use my legal last. How do you name. know in your former life you were a school teacher? He I was, like I mean, 10 I mean, years ago. Before I was an artist. Oh, I thought you meant like... <laughs> oh, I Reincarnation. Meant, yeah, like I thought you meant Indian way. That's the problem when you wear a turban, bro. Everybody thinks everything's so <laughs> deep. They do. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a specific thing in your form of... Like, some people are caterpillar. You were a school teacher, bro. You knew exactly. <laughs> like in the 2000s. Yeah, all right. You got to be specific with that one, dog. Yeah, I was, I, I was too woke. <laughs> yeah, you was too woke. I would, um... I don't. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I wouldn't want my child's last name changed, especially if I was in the child's life. If I was in the child's life, yeah. or actively trying to be in, in the, the child's life, life yeah. and you weren't letting me, you should not change the last name because you're actually preventing me from being, you know, with my child. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So don't change his name out of spite just because you grew to love somebody else. You grew to love somebody else. I don't even know if my child likes that person. Question: What if your last name was Bin Laden? Or Zimmerman. Or Zimmerman. Weinstein. Weinstein. Cosby. Cosby. Kelly. Kelly. Change them all. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to talk with the new pops like, yo, you got it. You got it, bro. You got it. You bro. Got it. Change every single fucking one of them. You know what I mean? No problem. Yes. Why not? What'd you say? Child. Taylor, it's a microphone right behind yeah, you. Yeah, my... my what, wants to change the name? Yeah. No, childs don't get to do what they want to do. How old is <laughs> it? They're children. This is not... How old is he? He, like, he grew up in a single... 
So my, uh, my homeboy grew up uh, just with his mom, but he always had his father's uh, surname and he never met his father. And then he changed it when he graduated high school to his mom's. So I like his that. Mom could yeah, see you can't just let diploma. kids change their name when they want to. What? You got to be of age. You can only change yeah. their genders when they're nine. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so I was talk? watching a TV show and this little girl, the father was stupid. absent. She didn't like her father. She was only like nine years old. And she told her mom that she wants to change her last name because her mom got remarried, blah, blah, blah. And wasn't part of her family. Well, I'm not mad at that. I mean, if you know at nine and you have a valid reason, you just say what you said, the father wasn't shit. Mm -hmm. She knew that? Yeah. How did she know that? Like Other because, than the mom saying your dad ain't shit. No, she wasn't really saying that. It's like the dad would go pick her up and he would be their guy arrested or was drunk or blah, blah, blah. Like, and she would be a parent to that. All right, get the ball from Taylor. Pass the ball. That, was, that isolation basketball. <laughs> just, God damn just, it. You just made all that up. I mean, right? I mean, no, I didn't. Up, it was right? on you Team Mom. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. the name of it? It was, was on Team Mom. No, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, can we do some Asking Idiots, please? Let's do it. Let's do some Asking Idiots and get the fuck right. out of hell. What happened with Deontay Wilder? Oh, he's signing up for... Oh, I'm a king. Yeah. I am your king. <laughs> I'm a I'm a brave king. Oh, hold up! You know we got another postman. We you know we can talk about Deontay real quick. I just I just think it's do a little bill and then, yeah, it's, and then I mean we can do we do the, we do Deontay first then do the bill and then go that I just um I don't I'm I'm, I'm I don't think Deontay Wilder should do the rematch so soon. Hell no! I don't think so. Like I don't think play he's it, ready. Play it, play it. Can your we play king it? is here. Your king is and here. We ain't going nowhere. For the war has just begun. No, it's over. I will rise again. I am strong. I am a king. They can't take my pride. I am a warrior. I'm a king that would never give up. I'm a king that will fight to the death. We will rise again. We will regain the title. I will be back. Uh, I love Deontay Wilder. I think he, Deontay Wilder should take uh, Floyd Mayweather up on his offer. Floyd Mayweather said he wants to train him mm. for the next fight. Um I don't know how soon the rematch has to be. I I, I I was assuming that he could exercise the rematch clause, but it didn't have to be immediately. Mm. I would have exercised the rematch clause, but I definitely would have went to fight at least one other tune up fight under the under the guys, under the guys of Floyd Mayweather. Let Floyd Mayweather train me for a while. Um and just refine my skills a little bit before I get back in that ring with Tyson Fury, man. Like, I don't know why he's rushing to do that. I think it's a lot of pride. I think it's a lot of ego. I do think Deontay Wilder can get his belt back one day, but not like this, King. Yeah. Not like this, bro. Yeah. You think I, he's yeah. concerned that Fury might lose it to somebody else? Fury ain't losing. Nah, Fury. There's nobody, there's nobody, there's nobody in the heavyweight division that can beat Tyson Fury. Bro, it, that's not happening. I'm thinking about the past and I'm going, who in the past could beat him? I literally don't know. Nah, maybe, I don't see maybe it. Lennox Lewis just because of the size, but like Lennox would have been good because of the size, right? Len Yo, th those are the best. Like those guys, and I always said it, even when they used to fight Tyson. Like the reason they could beat up on Tyson is because they were tall. They were tall. They had that long Length. reach, reach, and they could box. Yeah, you know a great fight to watch. Everybody go Google, go on YouTube, and watch Evander Holyfield Lennox Lewis Part Two. Yeah, this part is when two. Yeah, this is when Lennox beat him pretty easy. No. They was banging on each other. I thought one was the one where it was a horrible decision and then... One was a horrible... No. Right? One was a horrible decision. I don't remember. Two. I know it was the second fight. I don't remember exactly what happened in the first fight, but I know the second fight, uh -huh. they was banging on each other. Okay. And I think Lennox won that fight Yeah, I think by, Lennox, by a decision. I think Lennox lost the first one or it was like a split decision, but it was a bad remember. decision. I think two, Lennox won. Because everybody thought the second fight was going to be horrible. Right. But they was banging on each other. Like, yeah. that is how heavyweights are supposed to the motherfucking go at it. So I just, I mean, listen, that's who Tyson reminds me of. He reminds me of that era of heavyweight because he's yeah. big, he can box, he's agile. Yeah. I just think Deontay needs to just refine his skills a little bit before he gets back in that ring with goddamn Tyson Fury. Yeah, that's it's a, it. It's a bad move, in my opinion. If, I, if I'm if i him, in my opinion, I think Tyson fights Anthony Joshua. He brings the belts together and then he should just retire. He's nothing else to prove. And then after that, you vacate the belts and then Wilder can fight someone else and then you get your belt back. But I don't think you need to put yourself through that again, buddy. Nah, man. Nah. Come on, Cause King. Because it's going to be worse. Because now it's it, like, now like, he knows how to beat you. Yeah, Yikes. man. I don't want to see you go through that on social media right now. Just, just refine your skills, King. Go fight Ruiz. Or Charles Martin. Charles Martin would be a good fight. I don't know Charles. Charles Martin, Martin fought on the uh, undercard of the Deontay Tyson Fury fight. Uh -huh. Just fight a couple tune-ups. You're not getting a Joshua fight. Joshua's not fighting none of them. 
Joshua's staying away from all of those guys. Yeah, he's scared. He's not doing it. Yeah. So fight a couple of tune-up fights. Let Mayweather train you. See Tyson Fury like <clears throat> late next year, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. don't even. Why you want to ruin your summer? Don't don't fuck your summer up. Man. No, even fuck your summer don't up. Fuck your summer. Come on, man. Hey, yeah, there was that Tyson thing where we just pay a little bill real quick. Let's pay a bill. Let's pay a bill. Uh, other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? I'll tell you who Postmates. Postmates is your favorite food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. So where you're locked in, quarantined your apartment because you got coronavirus, make one of those delivery guys come to you, risk getting this fatal disease so that you can have your sushi. You don't have to make trips to the store. You don't have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you. Okay, download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. Now, here's the good thing. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. That's free money. All you got to do is use it, all right? Start your free deliveries, download the app right now, use the code IDIOTS when you download, okay? That's IDIOTS for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download Postmates. Get anything you need, anytime you need it, download Postmates and save with the code IDIOTS. Back to the show, let's do some Ask an Idiot. Oh, uh, I, I, we, we, could, we could touch on the Mike Tyson real quick, though. Okay, go, 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 go. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I understand where Mike's coming from. Um. You can play it, go ahead. I know the art of fight, I know the art of war. That's all I ever studied. That's why I'm so feared. That's why they feared me when I was in the ring. Cause that's all my I was an annihilator. That's all I was born for. And now those days are gone. It's empty. I'm nothing. I'm working on being the art of humbleness. Can you be with me? That's the reason why I'm crying, cause I'm not that person no more. And I miss them. Cause sometimes I feel like a bitch. Because I don't want to. I don't want that person to come out because if he comes out, hell is coming with him. And it's not funny at all. It must sound cool. Like I'm a tough guy. It's just, I hate that guy. I'm scared of him. Now, let me be clear. When I say I understand, Mike, I'm pussy. I don't mean I understand him as far as, like, you know, doing violence on people. Mm -hmm. What I understand is that's what Mike really enjoyed. Mike really enjoyed fucking people up. Yeah. So being that he's not able to put hands on people and fuck people up anymore— it bothers him. It hurts him. He feels like he's missing something. This is a true story. I think I've told y'all this before. I have. I used to have a little piece of uh, skin on my skin penis. Skin bridge. Yeah. Skin bridge. Yeah. Right? And it used to go from like the shaft to the head. Yep. And it's gone. But for whatever reason, when I got older, I started to miss it. Because I used to play with it when I was younger. Yeah. Right? But as I got older, I started to miss it. Right? Yep. But it's gone. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. It's the same thing with Mike Tyson. Those yes. days are gone. It's yeah. over. He's There's nothing he can do about it. Now, the only thing outlet I can give Mike Tyson is this. Maybe there's a, like a... How is that the same thing as Ty? Because you both like... It's the brain it. idiots. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, it's just like the, the fact that he... He needs, a, he needs a senior citizen fight. Like... <laughs> I'm serious. Like, it has to be like a senior citizen fight club, like a a, a UFC for older people. Like I'm a serious. Big three, a big three. Yes. Know? Yeah. He like just wants to put his hands. The Masters tour that's for it. golf, but you want that for He wants fighting. to put his hands on somebody. Ah, I promise you that's great. all Mike needs. Not no fake wrestling shit. Yeah. Mike really needs to fight. Let Mike fight. Let him go get that rage out of him. Yes. That's what he needs. It's just, that's it. Yes. It is interesting when you see him, man, because... Uh, like one of the reasons I think we've we've been so drawn to Mike is because he's like so fucking authentic and vulnerable. Like that is the most vulnerable that you'll see yeah. a human being in that moment. He's been like that though. He's been like that. Yeah, he's a cancel. And maybe that's it. But it's just amazing to witness. And that's why something like that goes viral. Like he has a podcast every single week. You don't see a clip go viral every oh, single I do. week. Every week? Yeah, yeah. Mike shit ripping. Really? I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are, but I see Mike shit all the time for oh, some reason. Okay, fair enough. Hot box, hot box podcast. Hot box, yeah. Hot box podcast. Well, he's it's just like it's just amazing to like kind of witness and it's just it's a testament to maybe what we were saying earlier, like authenticity cuts through. Yeah. It's man. a rare thing. And if you can be authentic and like vulnerable with your emotions, and shouldn't he acknowledge yeah. that, that Mike also got into a shit ton of trouble? 
Yeah, but that might also made him a millionaire, a hundred millionaire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, I, I get what he's saying. You got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. Like, but you also have to grow. You also have to evolve. I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily like my old self. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, I know yeah. that's weird to say because there's parts of you that helped you get to where you are, but then it's yeah. like those parts don't serve you anymore. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you, you let that shit go and you grow and you evolve into something else. But yeah. I think in Mike's case, what he loved to do was box, but what he also loved to do was hurt people. Mm. It's some people out there that just love violence. They like the sound, of, they like hearing a bone break. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. like motherfucking killing somebody and putting the body somewhere and then coming back and watching the body decay. Uh. I've heard, I've heard people who are in jail right now. Yeah. Doing life sentences say shit like that to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like it's certain people that just love that type of violent energy and he yeah. just needs the outlet to get that shit out you bro. should just like join a wild ass rapper's entourage someone that <laughs> always brings a lot of trouble to them i think it, i think mike's has to be controlled has to be controlled it's too crazy yeah, yeah. a rapper entourage wouldn't be good for him yeah. you know what i'm saying he needs to he needs to be in a controlled environment i'm telling you fight club bro you need to start an OG fight club. Fight club for people 50 and up. Yeah. And let Mike just go at it with people. He'll kill everybody. That's what he wants. You sign a waiver. <laughs> if in the way the waiver simply says, if you die, you die. You die. <laughs> and you sign it. And fucking you get in there with Mike. If he fucking kills you, that's it. You you yeah. you, you you consented to death. God bless Mike Tyson. I hope you find somebody to fuck fuck up. Wax is like that. He needs it, you think? I know he, Wax says it all the time. Wax Wax, he calls it a freebie. He's like, I, I need a freebie. Because he, like, he wants somebody to do something fucked up. So that he can, <laughs> so he can get his shit off. Interesting. I'm, I'm, just, some people are like that. Some people like violence. They like cracking skulls. I guarantee you Mike has gone to mad anger management. And nothing. Just like works. Wax has. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's be done the Beyond Scared Straight programs. All of that shit. Some people just like violence. Yeah, it's like a vampire. He's a vampire. He, he needs, needs the blood. That. That's needs it. That blood. That's it. That's it. So, I wonder if it's similar to like competitive instinct. You know how like some athletes they just need to compete. Michael Jordan needs to compete. It that, could be fucking. But I think ping they find pong. something new though. They like, find a new thing yeah. to funnel it into. But Mike hasn't found. That's what I said. He his, can't his, be golf. His two loves exactly yeah. because because uh, violence is so extreme. Yes, nothing else comes closer. Taps into it. Sports, you can take that competitive instinct and you can put it into something that's safer. Beer pong doesn't matter what the fuck it is. I just want to compete and beat you. But when someone literally wants to beat you, yeah, how do you? Recreate that. Mike likes violence Oof. and boxing. Those are his two loves. And he's not able to do either right now. Yeah, you I mean, there are guys in the UFC crazy. that are like late 40s still fighting. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think Mike would have a chance against those guys. No. Like no, Randy Couture. Nah, nah, and no, 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 no. He's too short. He's too short. Don't have no, you don't know how to kick. Let's do, let's do Ask an Idiot. All right. Ask an Idiot. Um, Good question. We didn't plan this. All right. Ready? Okay, you got it. Corey go. Watkins. Go. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> we got, we got, go. we got, we got, go. we got one humble here. here. Okay, go. Uh, Tori Watkins humble wants to know why is it called Indian Giver when the Indian people didn't give anything away and take it back? Are y'all asking me because you think Native Americans and nobody says that there. humble. <laughs> we just asked the question. You're the smartest person here. Now, so we asked the smartest person here about this. Said it. <laughs> Nobody said anything about that humble. I, I, I learned that term Indian giver uh, on Seinfeld. I never, I never heard of it before. What was that. Seinfeld's take? There was a. I never watched. Somebody made that reference about giving a gift back uh -huh. and using that term Indian giver. And that's the first time I ever heard it. Pull that goddamn episode up. I need him to get some outrage. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> no, why nobody gave Seinfeld no outrage but for that? But it's not you guys. It's Native Americans. The term. Well, even the fact that they call Native Americans Indians is because Columbus thought he found India. Yeah. And I was just stuck, and everybody's okay. Holy with it. shit! So Columbus was a brilliant idiot. He was, but wouldn't you do that too if somebody <laughs> financed your whole trip and then you got somewhere you knew wasn't India? Wouldn't you be like, "Nah, it's India." Word up! Like, I found right? India. Like, yeah, no, <laughs> okay. that's the background. You don't like, know well, where all those spices about? you promised us. Nah, India it's has. not the spicy part. India is a big country. That's why I'm like, yo, India is a big country. It's got diverse, you know, group of people. Not everybody's in the spice, bro. Tori, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I don't know why they call things Indian givers. I think that you should reach out to a Native American podcast and ask them because I have no idea. Why is they the natives them? gave back those smallpox blankets? Like, yeah, real talk. We don't that's want these. Word up. We that's don't what they want these. Take them back, back please. <laughs> so that's what fucked up. Um. Okay. Another one. Let's do it. Um. If y'all were gay. 
Who would be the man and who would be the wife? That's rounds down range 87. Rounds down range 87. If we were gay, who would be the man and who would be the wife? First of all, that's, that's disrespectful because <laughs> both of us can be the mans. Well, there okay. wouldn't be a wife. There would be no we're wife. Gay. We're two husbands. We'd be husband and husband. That's so disrespectful. Won't you yeah. grow the fuck up rounds down on, range 87? Do you, you ever hear Mad days? Pete refer to his boo as a wife? No, Facts. motherfucker. He says, my goddamn husband. Husband. My hubby. What the fuck is wrong with you, rounds down range? Come That's so disrespectful. On, you say what? Not. If you're gonna put your, what'd you say, T Taylor? As in, like, with the lesbian couples, it's like lipstick. Why are you about lesbians everything today? First of all, <laughs> first of all, first of all, why you lesbian first of all, my all little day. lesbian, yeah. all right? Yeah, like, my little lesbian, talk, my new man. favorite lesbian, okay? First of all, <laughs> first of all, there would be no lipstick man because men don't wear lipstick. Exactly. Well, the, us two men don't wear okay, lipstick, that's just, right? okay? Maybe a gloss. I just think this is a disrespectful <laughs> question because I think that you're thinking that two men in a As relationship. In bottom or top. That's what they well, are. that's different. Yeah, come on. <laughs> that's bro. a different question, Taylor. That's our business. Okay? Mind your business, bro. That's and a wise man once said, the top feels so much better than the bottom. <laughs> Who that's said my that? answer. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Jason, Jason Lee said it? He said it feels Jason better. Lee did not say that. That was 50 Cent. That was 50 Cent. Oh, he did? Yes. Up. But he's talking about being on top of the rap game. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait a minute. The Wind rap game? Like in window shoppers. <laughs> but like the rapper game? Is that who No. Is? Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> I don't know if we should have that or not. <laughs> I don't want to be funny. Really I, I, yeah, I don't know if I can explain that one. <laughs> hey, bro. He said it. All right. Ready? Um, okay. 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 Ready? Hey, game. He's a comedian. He's a comedian. Okay. Game knows. Now, now we can keep it. <laughs> game knows. Uh, okay. Okay. At what point in both of your careers will you sit back and say, I have done what I set out to do. I can retire now. Ooh. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know because goals change, right? Like, yes. you know, um, we, we had Susie Orman on Breakfast Club and Susie Orman was like, you're never really retired because, you know, you retire, but then you still want something to do. It goes back to what we were talking about with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's doing the podcast because he's trying to fill a void. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like when you're a creative person, you're always going to be trying to fill a void. So you may retire from one thing. Mm. But then you may want to go do something, something else. else. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you ever truly retire. I don't know if there's ever a point where you get to that point. Where you just sit back and like, fuck it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I agree. I, I completely agree with that. Now, you mind you, just die. You say what? You just die. Yeah, and it's jammed on like George Carlin, like before him. Yeah. And like three days later, he died. No, I don't want to do that. No, no, because I enjoy doing nothing. So at maybe so I, at a point in your career, you'll just go, you know what? I'm I'm going to figure out this nothing stuff and I'm going to attack that in the same way that I attacked my... Yeah, but it's good not to have a schedule. Say what? I said it's good not to have a schedule, right? Right. Like, you know, you can retire and do nothing, but you can do what you want when you want to. Right. Meaning I don't have to be at the radio station 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Or I don't have right. to do the podcast on Wednesdays. Or I yeah. don't have to write a book. Or yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have to produce this TV show. I do what I want to when I want to I do it. it. Like my dad was a cab driver. He's retired. He has three jobs now. Has three volunteer jobs. Wow. Just because he wants to work. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, I like, and that structure and that getting up. And then like when I ask him to do something, I'm busy. I'm like, what are you busy doing? Like you're retired. No, I'm busy. I wonder <laughs> how that will feel. Because in my mind, I can't wait to retire from the structure. That's what it is. It's the structure. It's yeah. not the work. I can't wait to retire from the actual structure of having having to be somewhere. Yeah. You I know look, what I mean? I look forward to that, like, uh, part of my life where I can figure out nothing. Mm. Like, and appreciate nothing. Because right now, I love doing. And that fills me and, like, satisfies me. But, like, eventually I'm going to get to a part of my life where I just can't do as much as I could. Yeah. And... I, I look forward to that part where it might be way later. I might be 80 years old, but I look forward to it. It's like, hey, I'm going to attack doing nothing the same way I attacked my career. But I like, can see you just showing up on stage and just making fun of people for three hours. Oh, I, w I don't ever want to stop. I don't want ever want to stop yeah. stand up. Like, I love so doing I feel like from yeah. that, yeah. I get it. I mean, because I used to have a structured job and then I stopped in my previous life. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> and then yeah, I stopped yeah. having a structured job because I, I, I didn't like that idea of having to be somewhere. Yeah. But now I do miss structure because you get a lot more done yeah. under structure. 100%. And it's like... What's weird is like, the more success I've gotten, the more structure I've created for myself. Yeah. Like, I have office hours. I go to the new studio four days a week. 
You know what I mean? That's I'm, yours though. But uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's like, different when you clocking in on your own time. True, but at the same time, like you can make your time. You could decide when you do shit, when you don't do shit. You know, you get to a certain like luxury, even like there's certain days of the week I perform in the city. You know, there's certain days of the week where I take off and I spend with my girl. But like that's a luxury that you have when you have success. Early on, you're like, okay, I can get on stage any day, I'll do it. Da, 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 da. But it is interesting that like I've gravitated towards structure with the luxury to have none of it if I want. Yeah. And also paying people to tell you what to do, like a teacher, like a trainer. Yes. Like whatever. 100 yeah. percent Absolute paying experts. Be in my life yeah. so that you could do the things that I don't know how to do. So yeah. I could either learn and I'll or... work harder because I don't want to let you down. 100 yeah. percent Love it. Yes. This is a good question from Omar Yum. Um asking idiot. If you could go back in time and live a simple existence with your ancestors in Africa, would you do it, Sharla? If no, why not? Um, I would not do it. Because if I have to go back in time, then that means I will remember this era. Ooh, that'd be tough. Exactly, man. Like, yeah. what the fuck am I going to talk about? You know how crazy I would look in that village? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to tell them about the world Don't that I come from. <laughs> exactly. Don't get on the boat. Exactly. No, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, if I'm over there and I start, because I have a theory about this. I have a theory that... They didn't give up their best and their brightest, okay? <laughs> I had a theory that they made a deal with the Europeans and they said, all right, take all these motherfuckers that we don't really need. <laughs> and I think I think they thought that they was going to come over here to America and fuck shit up. Oh, that was definitely, that's definitely forgotten in the history. Like yeah. the role that there were some people out there. Four white dudes don't just show up on Africa and go, we'll take everybody. No, like, no, there was some no. assistance on there the African side I that can't. has been written out of the books completely. Like, nobody knows who those slave I dealers think, are. Yeah, I think they gave up some of their worst, bro. I think how we talk about World Star Island and the people we would ship to World Star Island. That's who you think it was? I think so, really? man. I think so. I think so. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Interesting. I think so. Now, the reason I probably wouldn't send them away is because I would say to them, look... What's going to happen is they're going to go over to America. They're going to become slaves. Yeah. It's going to be a population of us over there that's going to be fighting this for a long time. It's going to be really, really bad. Matter of fact, when I left, it was still bad. Yeah. So let's just kill them. All right. Let's just kill them. <laughs> let's just, let's just, no, I wouldn't kill them. Let's just find them jobs. Guys. That's all. No, seriously, let's just find them jobs. In this new world, though, Charlemagne, are you not at least a little bit concerned about what Sean King would do? <laughs> <laughs> How can we treat black people like this? We're like, what black people, bro? <laughs> we don't got any black people. No, what are you talking about, Sean? <laughs> oh, Brazy Big says if you started a new podcast and you could pick one rapper and one athlete to be your co host, co host, who would you pick? I don't know who the athlete would be. The rapper would definitely be Glasses Malone. Oh, Glass is so funny, dude. Yes. He's boxing takes. Are you, do you follow him on Twitter? Yes, that's my guy, yeah, man. He's a great. He's a great. Uh, Gla Glasses Malone. I don't know who the athlete would be, but rapper definitely Glasses Malone. Yeah. I ask you, humble. Would you go back in time to live a simple existence with your ancestors if you could do it? No, I like the modern convenience. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, even yeah, no. If I could go back, if I could go there with a blank mind, like if you erased, if you hit me with the Men in Black shit and erased everything from this era and sent me back, yeah, we'd all adjust. There's a lot of sitting around doing nothing out there. Yes, so like, they do like two things in the whole day, and they're just sitting around. Doing you wouldn't whatever. even know you're not doing nothing because right. you never did nothing. Yeah, but yeah, it's boring. I mean, if you like yeah. map out the stars, you got to be bored. <laughs> like, what? think about bored. You are like, oh, that kind of looks like a Capricorn. That's how you figure out life, though. Remember, you you yeah, said a little while ago, oh, you said, dude, yo, yeah, I'm just, I'm I, I want to try to figure out nothing. Yeah, no, no, I get it, but like, that's on my terms. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, just imagine how bored they must have been back in the day, dude. Like, I don't just know. looking at fire, and that was entertaining. Fire? It's entertaining for us when we're, like, scrolling all day, but I think fire gets boring after a while. You're not like, damn, fire's popping today. You're like, yeah. this shit is hot. This is the last one. <laughs> um, fire is hot today, bro. This is the last asking idiot. Underscore T.O. Frio. This is weird. All right. Can I say this? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Tio Frio is right. Hold on. Right, it's right over who handles buckets better, KFC or Jimmy Butler. It's right over that one. Tio Frio. He says, why? I'll read it. It says, why did Uncle Charlotte take a liking to young, young Schultz? Ooh. Been a fan of y'all since the early days of God Code, and I've been wondering. 
Nigga be elaborate too if you answer. None of that. We had a connection. <laughs> mag, <laughs> mag <type> shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you put keep it tight. Well, Tio Frio, uh, we had a connection. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Tio, I don't know what to tell you. We had a connection. Some Tio, one thing you have to realize about life: some shit is just mag shit, bro. All right, okay, it just is. All right, I don't know yeah. what to fucking tell you. All right, I, they, they, he was funny on Guy Code. We took a Uber or something together to a hotel. When we landed in LA, we flew out together. We got in the car together. We got flewed out. We got flewed out. Yeah. We got in the car together. Yeah. We sat next to each other in the back seat. Stayed at the same hotel. Mm. Mm. And the rest is history. Mm. The rest is, oh yeah. The rest, is, the rest is mag shit, we, we bro. We put on that fifty cent top bottom. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> the top feels so much better than the bottom. Let me try. Let me try. Yeah, and we knew that racial. Listen, we knew we knew racial tension was gonna get at an all time high. So you know what better to bring races together than two manly max. All right. <laughs> Okay. We need to heal the ecosystem, That's it, bro. Man. These things happen, That's it. bro. A black mag and a white mag yep. heal the ecosystem together. That's what we do. That's right, baby. Yeah. All right? We had a connection. Oh, God, Taylor. No, no, no. no. I think See, this, this is what I'm talking no, about. No, 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 Corrupt. This, I think this will end it great. All I right, thought we just ready? ended on a great no, high note. That was a good high note. You magophobic, bro. Yeah, you That's really your problem. Are. No, this helps. Ready? All right, go. Okay. Okay. Right. I just busted right inside him, and he can't extend on me anymore, and he seems a little overwhelmed by my girth and tonic. That's right. <laughs> Tio Frio. We, that's right. We had a connection, and I busted right inside of him. <laughs> Play it one more time. This shit. Okay. Right. I just busted right inside him, and he can't extend on me anymore, and he seems a little overwhelmed by my girth and tonic. It's one time for Dick Bayless. That's that's Dick Bayless, bro. That's Dick Bayless, bro. Big Dick Bayless is not playing. You tell a motherfucker he was overwhelmed by my girth and tonnage? (laughs) God damn. Jesus Christ. What's Shana have to say about that? Who is Shana? Shannon. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) You might know him as Shannon. I don't know, man. Shannon and Skip trying to steal our goddamn mag shine. Oh, that's true. That's all. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You, well, first of all, thank you, Humble, for coming. Yeah, thank you for having giving me. Giving me a Twitters and stuff. At Humble the Poet. It's all at Humble the Poet. It's and climbing. tell them, go buy Humble's books, Unlearn. And uh, what was the other one? Things Things no one else can teach you. Things no one else can teach you. Go get both of those books. One's yellow, one's blue. All right? <laughs> Gang. <laughs> Gang, his next one will be green. Okay? But uh, salute to my guy, Humble the Poet. And as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. 